further more for right. Dennis Erickson's quarterback over Rick Meyer. Right. Well, you know, they've got so many talented players on an offense at wide receiver, at running back. They needed to get the ball to him. Rick Meyer wasn't doing it. They had to pull the trigger, make the change. If you look, there's Rick Meyer. If you look at the numbers, John Friesen stepping up as a starter, five touchdowns, two interceptions versus only one touchdown with nine interceptions for Rick, interceptions for Rick Meyer. Those numbers alone look for uh, look for the, the Seattle Seahawks to move ahead. But the focus is on Steve McNair from Tiny Alcorn State on his right arm, the Southwest Athletic Conference. Hi everyone, Greg Gumbel in New York. Let's get you caught up on the early games played today in the National Football League, beginning with the game in Indianapolis. The Chargers lead the Colts by a score of 26 to 12. Bad day for Jim Harbaugh. Committed five turnovers, four of them on interceptions. After Harbaugh fumbled Sean Salisbury to Tony Martin, 22 yards. He has an NFL leading 10 TD catches. The Chargers up 26 to 12 in the final moments of that game. In Dallas, the Cowboys were threatening for a game-tying field goal, but Troy Aikman was intercepted by James Willis, who lateral to Troy Vincent. The whole play went 102 yards for a touchdown. The Eagles are going to beat the Cowboys. They lead them 31-21. In Green Bay, the Packers late in the game, leading the Detroit Lions. Packers will go 8-1 on the year. In the uh, Pittsburgh-St. Louis game, the Steelers win it by a score of 42 to 6. Jerome Bettis facing his former mates today. First time since he's been traded. Takes the handoff from Mike Tomzak. Goes 50 yards for his second TD of the game. 129 yards rushing on 19 carries. Over the 100 yard mark for the seventh time this season that leads the NFL. Steelers win it 42 to 6. Other games today in Baltimore. The Ravens and the Bengals tied at 21 in Atlanta. The Falcons winning their first of the year 20 to 10. The New York Giants hosting the Cardinals and leading them 16 to 6. And the Bears is hosting Tampa Bay. It's a final now, 13-10 Chicago. We will send you to the kickoffs in Foxborough, Minneapolis, and Seattle right after this. In 1866, the world's first dynamo was in... Well, you can talk about why Seattle has turned things around recently. Their defense playing better. John Fries in for Rick Meyer. But maybe the most important reason is the reemergence of Chris Warren. The season high 146 yards last week, Bob. And you can see what he did in the first five games, what he's mm -hmm. done in the last three. Well, when, when Rick Meyer's passing game wasn't working, they knew it. They could get people out of the secondary, out of the linebackers, moving up to the line of scrimmage and take away Chris Warren in the run game. Now that John Fries is in, the pass game is back. Defenses have to honor him. They've got to move people back, uh, back into the defense and left people up front to play the run. You saw Mel Gray. This was a game-time decision. Did not make the game last week with a back injury, but he returns it across the 25-yard line. So Mel Gray back in to return pitch for Houston this week. Steve McNair started twice last year, 2-0, but that's when the Houston Oilers were out of the playoffs. This is his first meaningful start of the NFL. Up front, a good offensive line, perennial pro bowlers Bruce Matthews and Mark Stepnoski anchor the front five. Eddie George could be the rookie of the year in the NFL. Sanders and Davis, the wideouts. Rod Lewis is the tight end. Steve McNair took over for Chris Chandler last week in the third quarter in the loss to San Francisco. And he hands off to Eddie George, and George is up the middle for a big gain on the very first play of the game. Across the 45 to the 47, finally brought down by Daryl Williams. Well, one of the things that the Houston Oilers must have watched from the Charger game last week is the cutback lanes are there. They start to the right and cutting back the backside. You look and you see the backside and number 99, Michael McCrary, sealed off by great block by Frank Wycheck leaving him an open lane to run. Not a bad way to start for the Houston offense. A 20-yard pop right up the middle by George. And he'll give him another chance. And that quickly, he is into Seahawk territory to the 45. And the Seahawk defense had a coming-out party last week. Oh, man. In the win over San Diego, they finally got themselves together on defense as you take a look at their coordinator, Greg McMacken. And the Seahawk front four. Sinclair leads the NFL with nine sacks, but the damage was done by Adams and Kennedy last week. Gray, Harris, Blackman, and Williams, the secondary. Terry Wooden playing just his second game of the season since returning from a hamstring injury last week. And it's Eddie George again, 
and Eddie George may have picked up another first down. So three plays, McNair starts out with, and they all go to the rookie out of Ohio State. Hey, and, and why not? Why not do it? They get a first down there, Eddie George picking that up. But if you've got Steve McNair, you've got the young guy who uh, so many people are looking at and going to scrutinize in this game. Fans, coaches, media, everybody. Why not get the run game going? Certainly takes the pressure off the quarterback. Again to Eddie George. Four plays and four carries by George. And this time Seattle does a better job of hemming him in, but he still gets onside the 40-yard line before the safeties, Williams and Blackman, brought him down. Well, one of the good things you see with Eddie George, the vision on this guy. I mean, just jammed at the line of scrimmage. It's one thing to be sitting five back, five yards back from the line of scrimmage and find a hole, but to be that close and be able to cut back, it's, it's amazing. And look at Eddie George's right now, last season, averaging only 2.8 yards per carry in the run game. They haven't had a good run game since Earl Campbell's days. Now 4.6 with Rodney Thomas and Eddie George in the back there. Well, this is Eddie George again. Every single play to the rookie and Sam Adams, who had a very productive week last week, teaming up front with Cortez Kennedy, brings him down. Well, leave it to, leave it to us to jinx the guy. <laughs> you know, we throw up some nice numbers for Eddie George, and he gets stopped. But you make a good point. Sam Adams is a guy that they've been waiting defensively to emerge. They brought him in to balance out that defensive front, take some pressure off of Cortez Kennedy. Up to the uh, last week, really hasn't been doing it. So on third and seven, this was a category where Houston was one of 13 last week. And we'll see McNair go to the air for the first time, and he's pressured the flags come in and stop the play. Well, unless Sinclair was pulled off sides, it looks like uh, Sinclair is going to get the unabated to the quarterback call. Ball start, 75, offense. Ah, he was pulled. Still third down. Irv Eatman is called for the penalty at the right tackle position for Houston. Irv Eatman, the vet, you're going to see sitting right out here on the right-hand side. And you're going to see as the tape starts to roll, just gets a little twitch, little twitch of the right leg. He knows he's got a speed rusher on the outside, and uh, as you get a little older, you, you look for any advantage you can get. Well, there it is, the dismal third down conversion last week against San Francisco in the 10-9 loss. McNair, middle screen to Rodney Thomas. Thomas has the first down to the 25 of Seattle before Williams and Blackman finally had to put the wraps on him. And down is Brad Hopkins, the left tackle for Houston. Well, to, to say that, uh, you know, Rodney Thomas came in last year. They expected him to be the running back of the future. The, it, it, it worked a little bit. He had some good games. Didn't really bring the, the run game al along as, as much as they, they thought he would. Uh, but watch here. It's just going to be a middle screen here. He's just going to dump it off in the middle, let Thomas take the ball. Look at the good blocks downfield. Mark Stepnoski. And uh, Thomas, is he, is he cutting? No. He, he's going to go get yardage. Well, You'll see Hopkins, number 72, Hopkins. gets kind of uh, rolled up right there. His own, uh, well, friendly fire just kind of gets it pinned to the turf. Hopkins has been the starting left tackle for the Oilers since the sixth game of his rookie year. He is a number one draft pick out of Illinois. There's the backup, John Runyon, who is a fourth round pick out of Michigan this year. And, and Dan, you want to know something? I, mean, I don't know. If, I, I know this is. I don't want to be this graphic and see this, see the injury again. But this is a, a, one of the points. I, I, don't, I don't care who tells me that they've done studies about astroturf versus grass or not. But players get hurt more often on astroturf. You can give me all the studies you want. You ask any of the players down on the field today. You ask any player across the NFL. To, on a, any Sunday, they believe that there's more of a chance of them twisting a knee, blowing an ankle on AstroTurf than on natural grass. And I think that last play indicates it. He had his foot stuck. His own guy kind of rolled up on him, and there was nothing to do to free it up. Watch it here at the end. You, you're going to see him right there working up against McCrary. He falls down. Watch his foot gets pinned on the turf. He can't pull it out. And Matthews just kind of rolls up on it and kind of hyperextends the knee a little bit. So Hopkins... At least walking off under his own power, replaced by Runyon up front. Runyon left college as a junior. First team All-Big Tenor now in the left tackle spot. A critical spot 
especially for a rookie quarterback in Steve McNair as you take a look at the current drive that has been all Eddie George except for the last play and a big gain by Rodney Thomas for 19 yards which picked up the first down for Houston on this opening series from Seattle scoreless and Eddie George right side carries a couple of Seahawks with him out of bounds Dean Wells and Terry Wooden in good pursuit. Well, one of the guys playing very well for the Seattle Seahawks defense is a linebacker, Dean Wells. You see him there in the middle of the screen. Nine, nine, number 95, watch the pursuit. Just kind of like weaves his way through all the garbage there to make a nice play with Terry Wooden and uh, uh, Kit, yeah, pretty much stopping for a short game. Dean Wells out of Kentucky in his fourth year, a defensive end in college and the scouts pretty much said, well, you're going to have to be a linebacker if you want to play in the NFL. He says, no problem. I'll do whatever it takes to get there. Second down and seven now. And McNair to the air for the first time. And he's got Willie Davis. Davis will be inside the 20 short of the first down, and that'll bring up another third down for Houston. Terry Wooden made the stop. Wooden played in his first game of the season last week, a hamstring injury. He suffered in the final preseason game versus the 49ers. And that was a costly loss for Seattle because he was their leading tackler last year. As you talk to the defensive players in Seattle, they mentioned the wooden factor. The wooden factor. Winston Moss brought that up. I mean, he is, they do have some good linebackers. Very emotional leader in Winston Moss. Dean Wells we talked about. But Terry Wooden kind of like sets the stage for these guys. And, uh, and uh, he is the Terry Wooden factor. Third and four. The Oilers successful in their last third down conversion. That looked like a quarterback draw by design. And Seattle was ready for it, especially Cortez Kennedy. Who Dennis Erickson said had the best game he's had since I've been here last week. Well, we've seen, I have seen over the years, a lot of quarterbacks do this quarterback draw. You start to head back, you just pull up and you just head north and south. Now the reality is, you've got to, you've got to read that a little bit more as a quarterback. You've got to start to drop a little bit more. Let these guys start coming up field, then pick yourself a hole. He told us yesterday they probably would work that in too. Their uh, repertoire did not work the way they planned. So this is a 36-yard field goal attempt by Al Del Greco, who is having one of the great seasons so far in NFL history, and he bangs that through to give Houston a 3-0 lead. Del Greco connected on a... They run the wide receiver off. And the longest in Oilers history. Because of all the, the preparation he's done, it's still a lot of pressure to step up and actually do it. So to get the run game going like they have here with Eddie George, Rodney Thomas, is more helpful than, than he can even know for Steve McNair. Ten plays, 55 yards, better than six minutes for Houston. Well, next Saturday at 2 o'clock Eastern Time, it's an encore presentation of the NutraSuite World Professional Figure Skating Championship. Some of the great names in skating will be there next Saturday at 2 o'clock Eastern Time, including Krista Yamaguchi, Nancy Kerrigan, Brian Boitano. It is a world-class field of skating stars. That's next Saturday right here on NBC. So it's not, one of, those, it's not one of those cool ones where they dress up in like costumes. Like I don't know. You'll have to check it out next Saturday. It's not like you know Sesame Street on ice. I don't believe so. So those, I mean, with kids, those, you know, I don't believe the only ones you go to. I don't <laughs> believe it gets that wacky, Bob. Okay, good. And on the drive, uh, Steve McNair just Steve went to the Roussard, air a couple Steve. of times, but he did connect both times. As you take a look at Steve Roussard back deep for Seattle to receive the kick from Al Del Greco, who has given Houston a three nothing lead. Not a very long kick, but Roussard comes. Out from the seven-yard line and tripped up across the 25. Brought down by Raphael Robinson. And John Freeze, two and one since taking over the starting reins from Rick Meyer. Up front for him, Atkins, Kendall, Mawai, Graham, and Ballard. They're excited about Kendall. He hasn't played a lot this year. This is just his fourth game. He's been hampered by injuries. Number one pick out of Boston College. Chris Warren, the big game last week. Blades and Galloway, the receivers. Christian Fourier is the tight end. So Seattle begins first and 10 from its own 28-yard line. 8.34 left in the first quarter. And Freeze's first hit is to Chris Warren. And Warren across the 30-yard line to the 32. The Houston defense, which has been impressive most of the season. Up front, young Ford Walker and Anthony Cook. 
The linebackers are led by Michael Barrow, Baron Wortham, and Joe Bowden, and it's probably one of the better defensive secondaries, if not the best, in the NFL. Lewis and Dishman at the corners, Blaine Bishop and Marcus Robertson, the safeties. Gain a three for Warren, second down and seven. Nothing up here for Cruz. He turns in the flats and finds Warren, and Warren has a first down out of bounds, close to the 40. Chased out of bounds by Wortham. You know, we talked about last week, Chris Warren with 146 yards rushing, also had another 40 in receiving. He is his, their favorite target in the uh, the safety valve role. Watch, you see Chris Warren just takes off to the right side of your screen, and uh, I've got a feeling that he was, if not primary receiver in this route, at least the, uh, the second man that John Friesen was going to go to. 28th catch of the year for Warren. He not only racks up yards on the ground, there's another bad exchange between Freeze and his center. It's incomplete to Joey Galloway, but even on the first play, yeah. it appeared Freeze had a problem on the center exchange with Kevin Mawai. And I don't know what the, why that's called. I mean, they had they really didn't have the problems last week when they were working. I mean, they've had enough time together, but there you see the ball just drop out of John Freeze's hand. He's got enough presence of mind to pick it up, stay cool, and he, and he makes a throw to Joey Galloway that, uh, frankly, Joey probably should have caught. There is Mawai. Second round draft pick in his third year out of Louisiana State. And Seattle now on the second down and 10 from the 39. Flag comes in, stops the play. And once again, we'll hear from Johnny Greer. Ball start, 86, offense, still second down. And that is on Christian Fourier. And Seattle has uh, driven Erickson nuts this year with all the penalties. In fact, one of the worst penalized teams in the NFL. As you take a look at Jacksonville as the worst, not a lot of good records there if you're penalized no. a lot, Bob. You're not surprised seeing Oakland there. They, they kind of have the reputation. So second down and 15 now for Freeze. Two wide to the left and the pitch to the right to Warren. Trying to find his way and he will not get much if anything. Chased out of bounds by Marcus Robertson. 19 carries and 146 yards last week versus the San Diego Chargers in what we termed a breakout game, Bob, for Seattle. They uh, really blew away San Diego, winning by a final score what, of 32-13. No, to 13. Watch Joe Bowden uh, uh, here, number 56 on the outside, just getting up. Uh, he, uh, he, he gets a nice penetration here on the outside. Uh, good penetration by the linebackers. Please reset the game clock to 7-17. Well, the game clock has 7.12 on it. Thank you. The officials want it set back to 7.17. And they best do that with uh, NFL Commissioner Paul <laughs> Tadibu right to my immediate left here, Bob. If there wasn't a window, we could shake hands with him. <laughs> you got lunch. There is. I did notice. Paul I did Tadibu. notice the... Uh, there he is. And you said it within arm's reach, Bob. We... We are, but we are protected by the glass, or I should say Tagliabu is protected from you <laughs> One by of the, the glass. Two. Also, Ken Baring, the owner of the uh, Seattle Seahawks. Well, temporarily. Oh, we'll keep you abreast on what's happening there. That's right. That is an ever-changing saga. Boy, two teams, uh, Houston and Seattle. Who knows where they're going to be? Well, we know Houston headed to Nashville, at least until after next season when they finish in the Astrodome. John Fries back, slings it across the middle of Warren, and Warren's got more good running room into Houston territory, finally pushed out of bounds at the 30-yard line. Well, you know, one of the things about Chris Warren as he gets pushed out by Raphael Robinson, one of the good things about Chris Warren it's coming back. is that, oh, man. Holding call against Seattle. Well, I was going to say one of the good things about Chris Warren is that once you get his his feet turn north and south in the field, and you give him a little room to accelerate, he can go. Now, he did go, but... Holding, 52 offense, uh, beyond the line of scrimmage. It's still third down. Mawai, the center, with a holding call, and that negates a 36-yard gain by Warren. Well, let's take a look at Kevin Mawai, number 52. You're going to see him right there, center your screen, working up against number 24, Steve Jackson. I, I, boy, I tell you what, well, we, we kind of missed the, the scene. I, 
I would assume that he grabbed a jersey, but uh, you, wouldn't th you wouldn't think you'd have to, to hold against the guy when you see that much of a size differential. Third and 20 now, and Freeze stumbles. He got his foot caught in the turf. Well, I'll tell you what, so far today, <laughs> this the, has not been a good Kevin Mawai is, uh, I don't know, <laughs> maybe they should just start over again. Uh, between the bad and the bad snap, the holding call, I think he just tripped over his foot on this last play. Not a good way to start offensively for Dennis Erickson and the Seahawks. So Rick Tootin comes on. Man, I'll tell you what, I've never seen a punter with guns like him. He has got some arms. We saw him yesterday at the facility. Looks like he works out all the time. Mel Gray from the 19. Uh, put on some moves and he's cracked hard at the 33 yard line. Brought down by Jay Bellamy. And Houston, after driving up the field for a field goal on its first series, will get another shot here. Well, the important thing for the Seattle Seahawks right now is to start getting some success defensively. Because last week, and, and we talked to Dennis Erickson, he said, this is an important game. We've got to prove that we can win back-to-back -back games. You know, they've been having so much, so many losses, so many things going wrong, that if you only win one game at a time, I think in the back of your mind as a player, you go, well, you know, okay, everybody's going to get lucky once in a while. Well, there's yeah, hey. in Hawaii uh, <laughs> in a discussion, and really, but up on that very first exchange, you yeah. can see that it wasn't clean. I think it was something like, uh, hey, keep your big feet out of my way. And, you know, I'm sure this is just, this has got to be nerd. I mean, these guys have worked together enough to, uh, so far this season not to have this kind of a problem. And it's exactly what Dennis Erickson wants John Freeze to be, and that is turnover free, and that is Daryl Lewis down for Houston. Injured on that uh, kickoff return. Good news, he's up. Number, number 29, you're going to see Darrell Lewis, number 29, coming across the screen. Looks like he's going to end up at the bottom of, uh, I don't know, just kind of, yeah, yeah, just kind of maybe caught his foot or something in the turf. Darrell Lewis, uh, one of the all-pro defensive backs in that uh, starting secondary for Houston. But now it's the Oiler offense. And Steve McNair who will begin from the 34-yard line. Just under six minutes left in the first quarter. The Oilers with the 3-0 lead off the foot of Al Del Greco. And McNair with a straight drop back right into the hands of Terry Wooden. Right between his numbers. Eddie George had to make the tackle, but McNair with a costly early interception. And this is what uh, you're going to get out of young quarterbacks sometimes. Sometimes making the right, wrong choices. Sometimes just a bad throw. The right side of your screen, Eddie George releases. Look at Terry Woods, just biding his time, rides his receiver out, and then steps right in front of Eddie George. I mean, that was nothing but the fact that Steve McNair just didn't see him. I mean, he got so locked on Eddie George and getting the ball to Eddie George that he just did not see that blue jersey stepping into the screen. Seattle from the Houston 23. There's Chris Chandler trying to calm McNair down. Ryan Blades in motion. And Warren gets the handoff. Not much there at all. Maybe a yard for Warren. Oh, we found out in watching Chris Warren and how he's been going this year, you need to give him some room. Little dives like that up the middle aren't going to get him the explosiveness that he needs. You know, he's, he's a, a big running back, so he needs a little room to accelerate. Defenses are figuring out that if they penetrate and get to him before he can get his feet turned upfield, then they can slow him down and not allow him to get that momentum going. And we certainly hope Chris is feeling a little better. He had to uh, back out of our meeting with him. He had a cold. That's right. He was seen sniffling in the locker room, so he was indeed <laughs> under the weather. Freeze back to pass. He's got Brian Blades, and Blades has a first down. It'll be first and goal for Seattle at the five-yard line. Nice job by that Seattle offense. Houston's defense came with a blitz. They brought number 23, Dexter Ziegler. 
from the left side of your screen, you're going to see Chris Warren come and pick up the blitz in corner. Right there, nice shot. Giving him the time to dump the ball off to Blades. Blades has had uh, sore ribs. He had limited practice time this week, and Erickson even told us that he was uh, didn't know how much playing time he would get, but a big gain there on first and goal. Gain of 15 for Blades, and Chris Warren has stopped for literally no gain at the six-yard line. See, once again, as Chris Warren, as a running back, Dan, runs kind of vertical. I mean, if you watch his running style, he's not a leaner. He doesn't get down, get the shoulder down, and pound it away. That, for that reason, that reason alone, if he doesn't have the, the good running start like he didn't have on that play, he's nothing but a big target for defenders. Well, Darrell Lewis uh, has come out of the lineup for Houston again. He's still having some problems. But it's second and goal for the Seahawks at the six, trying to take advantage of the McNair interception. Warren gets the call again, and again he has spun around for no gain. Henry Ford among the first to meet him on Houston's front line and the first boos of this game can be heard. Well, you know, as they say, if it if at first you don't succeed, try something else stupid. <laughs> you know, I'm not calling Bob Brokowski stupid. Oh, of course not. <laughs> he, no, he, a very, very good offensive coordinator. But, you know, you've, you've got to do something to stretch. Right now, you, if you look at the Oiler defense, they're all jammed together. They're keeping it clumped up in the middle. You've got to do something to stretch that defense and give Chris Warren a little bit of a room to make a break. Third and goal. Warren actually lost about a half yard. Fake to Warren. Freeze to the end zone. Incomplete. That was Christian Fourier in the vicinity, but that play never had a chance to fully develop as Freeze was met with some pretty good pressure by Houston. Yeah, number 92, Henry Ford getting some good pressure up inside. You're going to see Ford right there move, making a move. He's going to get pressure, working his way through the garbage. Takes a shot at John Freeze. Also, I think a little mix of communication on where that route should have ended. So Todd Peterson comes on and attempts a 25-yard field goal. Rick Tootin, the punter to hold. Peterson had four field goals last week. And he pumps it through from 25 yards out and ties the game with just under three minutes left in the first quarter. So the Seahawks do indeed take advantage of the Steve McNair interception and have tied it up three apiece. Dennis Erickson looking for his fourth win of the season. And we welcome those of you who have been watching San Diego and the Indianapolis Colts the final score there, the Chargers win it 26 to 19. Understand that uh, Jim Harbaugh had a rough oh. day there through four interceptions. The first quarter, was it in, first quarter in alone? the very first quarter alone. So who knows the story in the AFC, but here in Houston, Steve McNair is starting just his third NFL game, very first of this 96 season, led the Oilers on their scoring drive to open up the game. Now Del Greco kicked a 35-yard field goal, but he's in for Chris Chandler, who has been hurting from a groin injury in the early numbers for McNair. Well, you know, the one thing, too, the first drive of the Houston Oilers, they came out, started off with a running game, pounded it away with Eddie George, picking up some big yardage, nice middle screen to Rodney Thomas for uh, first down and about 20 yards. Second, uh, second drive, they started off say, let's try the, the passing attack. Let's go to Steve McNair, see what he can do. And, uh, boy, limited success is uh, an understatement as he throws it right to Terry Wooden. Warren getting a massage on the sidelines. He has not had any where to run. Peterson kicks off. And taking it will be Mel Gray from the 10-yard line. He doesn't look like he's lost the beat at all across the 40-yard line. Jeff Fisher told us it would be a game-time decision to see if Mel Gray could play. So far, he's been impressive. But he is limping. The NFL on NBC is brought to you by Dr. Pepper and your local Dr. Pepper butler. Dr. Pepper is just what the doctor ordered. By Toyota and their full line of quality cars and trucks. By McDonald's, official break of the NFL. And by Energizer Batteries, still going. Long-lasting Energizer Batteries keep going and going. Oilers series begins first and ten. Dennis Erickson 
trying to get his team just his fourth victory of the season. They started the slow route last year. They went two and six in their first eight games before going six and two. As we look at Eddie George get the carry from Steve McNair, but that was what Jeff Fisher told us. He was scared that uh, the Seattle tough. He was so impressed in talking to him. He was so impressed. Obviously, everybody's impressed with Cortez Kennedy, but what he's seen in uh, in Sam Adams, who, as I said before, has been a guy that they brought in to complement Cortez to take the double teams off of Cortez, but hasn't done it until uh, well, basically last week, where he started getting great penetration and making a lot of big hits, including sacks. Play action rolling out is McNair, and McNair has the first down, and that is what Fisher told us last night. He said. As far as the complexity of the game, it will not change. But we will roll out McNair a lot to take advantage of his athletic ability. Right. We were wondering if they were going to have to give him a limited game plan. He said even when he came in for the Atlantic game, he was pretty much running the entire game plan. Now with McNair, they will have more movement. He doesn't want him to be a running quarterback per se, but he wants to give him the ability to move. The bootlegs, the waggles, the short dashes, anything to get him out of the pocket and make the defense kind of redirect themselves. Good nine-yard pickup by McNair. And the Oilers once again quickly into Seahawk territory as Eddie George gets the call inside the 40-yard line. Boy, this is this offense, this running game by Eddie George. Talk about, uh, it seems like the last couple of years, we have seen some real good rookies come in and contribute right away. You know, they haven't been uh, sitting back and trying to resting on their laurels. In fact, Bruce Matthews, the, one of the veteran elder statesmen on that Houston Oilers team, said these young guys, the Eddie Georges and Steve McNairs, very professional. They don't come in blowing their own horn anymore. These guys are very professional, and you see that in their production. There's Bruce, Bruce Matthews in his 14th year at left guard. He's seen a few players come and go in his long NFL career. This time, Eddie George can't get out of it. He's dropped for a loss by Sam Adams. And that's one of the things we're seeing from Sam Adams. He, he was getting stuck on the, uh, on the line of scrimmage, but now he's getting penetration. Look at him here again as we show you this play one more time. 98, Sam Adams right there. Big circle for a big guy. Look at that little swim move and uh, hey, a little holding, but uh, Sam too big to stop. Gets back there and somebody's got to tell Eddie George that he is not Barry Sanders <laughs> and can't cut that quickly. So third down and seven. And the draw to Ronnie Harmon. But Ball Harmon start. can't get going before a fall 72. Start. Offense. Still third down. Brad Hopkins, who was down earlier in the game, is back in and uh, made the mistake. Yeah, a little bit of a jump by him on the uh, the left side. And uh, I'll tell you what, what, you're seeing more and more of that. Part of it become, because these defensive ends, these linebackers, these speed rushers on the outside, becoming so athletic that uh, you, you've, you've got to get a little bit of an advantage. Look at this. Seahawks outscored 56 to 16 first quarter. Boy, nobody could be happier than the second the quarter the coming quarter. up than Dennis Erickson right now. Tied at three in Seattle. We'll be right back for the start of the second quarter. This is the NFL on NBC. Only scoring in the first quarter, a couple of field goals, one by Del Greco and one by Peterson. Houston Oilers, Bob, really think they should be 7-1 perhaps at this point of the season. A one-point loss to Kansas City and a one-point loss to San Francisco last week. As McNair rolls out, throwing across his body, that one knocked down by Corey Harris it was intended for Derek Russell well one of the things we're seeing we told you that they're gonna get McNair moving and uh, normally they don't think they want to moving that far but uh, he had to because Sam Adams number 98 again with a pass rush look at that hump move boy just throws Donnelly down and then the quickness of these 320 pound guys amazing good job by Corey Harris and staying with his uh, his coverage but uh, McNair just pretty much swallowed up. End up Michael Sinclair knocking him out of bounds. Sinclair uh, perhaps snowing another sack. Reggie Roby kicks a high, towering punt. This is an excellent kick. Ronnie Harris calls for the fair catch at the 11-yard line. Opening seconds of the second. Jordan, Mr. Jordan! 
Next year, when I grow up, I'm going to win an NBA title. And when I'm nine, I'm going to be in a movie like Space Jam. And when I'm ten, I'm going to eat deluxe sandwiches, just like you. That's pretty ambitious. Now at McDonald's, try our deluxe sandwiches with a grown-up taste and collect these fun Looney Tunes stuffed characters from the movie Space Jam. Just $2.99 each with the purchase of a new deluxe or any other large sandwich. Come on. You want to learn how to jam? Yeah. Space Jam at McDonald's. Come hungry. Leave stuffed. As long as this thing's been going, we've been chasing it. It's an obsession with us. Check. We, we've gone. Welcome back to Seattle. Houston and the Seahawks 3-3. As you take a look at Sam Adams and his improved play, Bob, and talking with Coach Dennis Erickson, he talked about how Sam Adams played too high. He was such right. a gifted player. He could run around everybody, but you need more leverage in the NFL. He would, he would be standing up like this, pushing, and against NFL players, you can't do that. So what you're seeing with him now, he's getting more of a lean into the guys. And when he's pass rushing, you'll watch, he'll do two things. One is a rip where he'll hit, and he'll come up like this and just rip through on the guy. Now, the one on the, the last chase of McNeil, there, Should did, I get ready for this? Yeah, okay. sure. Right. They, call it, they call it a hump move, where right. you will actually start to do the rip, and then when the guy overreacts, he comes back with the arm here and just brings him back and just kind of comes back the other way underneath. we got a game to do. Let's oh, okay. Set, Sorry. Right? I was just having too much fun. <laughs> Seattle <laughs> from the 11-yard line, and John Freeze will throw. Pressure from his backside. Oh! oh. That was Carlister Crumpler, who was crumpled. Joe Bowden wow. came up and gave the big tight end a shot. And let me tell you this, in this day and age of guys who want to make the big hits and just knock people down, put the head down, hit them with the helmet, you don't see this kind of technique. Watch Bowden here with the hit and wrapping the arms. Wrap them up, wrap them up, and put them down. Just don't go for the big hit and have the guy break the tackle. He's using technique, baby. Crumpler almost uh, made a nice circus grab there. Second down and ten for the Seahawks. And Warren, again, not much up the middle at all. It was last week, Bob, against uh, San Diego. You did the game, and you saw how Seattle spread mm -hmm. out the Chargers, and that really freed up the, the running lanes for uh yeah, it sure did. Warren. They like going with the three wide receivers. They put the three wides in. They It forces the defense to go out and cover and forces the linebackers to, to be more aware of things happening to the outside, giving Chris Warren a little bit more room. Also last week, they did more of the cutback, like what we saw with Eddie George early in this game. Start one way, bring it back the other way. They had a season-high 206 rushing yards last week, and you saw that they've only been able to get six so far, and we're through one quarter. Freeze, incomplete, he wanted Mike Pritchard, and Pritchard uh, covered pretty nicely by Chris Dishman. Well, one of the things we're looking at, too, is when you talk about the run game, that uh, Houston is ranked number two in the AFC against the run. So, I mean, right there, you've got, uh, you've got a good matchup of that, of that uh, Chris Warren-led running game of the Seahawks and that uh, run defense with the Oilers. Boy, Mel Gray has been impressive so far this game and throughout his entire career remember he was limping a little bit on the last return he's suffering from a back injury and a chance for Houston to get some good field position Tootin's punt takes a dive left and Gray will just have to watch it roll but the Oilers will still have pretty good field position at the 42 another chance for Air McNair to get on track AT&T presents well, Chris Chandler had hoped that this would be a nice homecoming. He's from Everett, Washington, in the area here. Same place where Dennis Erickson hails from, but uh, he needs to rest his injured groin. We replaced by McNair in the third quarter of last week's game. He is the starting quarterback for Houston, and Jeff Fisher made that very clear. No matter what, Steve McNair pulls off today. First and ten for the orders from the 42. And Eddie George takes another crack, gets some good positive yardage up the right side. At about the 48, he stopped by Dean Wells. And you know what? Going into the season also, Dan, there was some concern. Chris uh, Chandler basically came up and said, you know what? I mean, if McNair's going to be the guy, then I, wa I want to go. I mean, I appreciate everything. I want to be traded. But at that point, it took Jeff Fisher saying, listen, we go through camp. You compete. You're the guy. And as you said, once uh, his groin is healthy again, he will come back and be the guy. But it's a... Uh, as always, invaluable, just totally invaluable uh, experience for a young guy like Steve McNair to get in here and uh, make some mistakes, but hopefully make some good things happen. Eddie George trying to make something happen. Stopped in his tracks for no gain. 
But Steve McNair, uh, to drill that point home, Bob, was also disappointed that he was not named the starter at the beginning of the season. We asked him last night, hey, were you disappointed? He said, sure, I'm a competitor. I thought yeah. it was my job, but uh, they opted for Chandler, yeah. and he'll be the man. I mean, there's nobody out there that doesn't believe as a starter or backup uh, that uh, it, this this is his job and his job alone. In fact, you get very territorial. If somebody goes out and takes your place, you're like, hey, that's my position. Seven-year, $28 million contract for McNair, first quarterback chosen last year. And great to Rodney Robert. Thomas on third down, and the Oilers will have to punt again. Boy, he tried to get the ball off to Rodney Thomas. You remember the first drive, great success with the middle screen. That time, Winston Moss, man-to-man -man on Thomas, and uh, had nowhere to throw it. Right. McNair tried to dump it off anywhere. Look at the left side of your screen. Winston Moss, 55. Well, maybe a little bit of a grab on Rodney Thomas, and I, I think that's why you see the shrug of the shoulders. Like, hey, ref, did you see that? But uh, it, is a, it is a legitimate coverage technique for linebackers. It's not legal, but it's legitimate. Reggie Roby hangs one high. Ronnie Harris turned it into a little bit of an adventure, but makes the fair catch at the 17-yard line and what is so far a low-scoring affair. So far, the Seattle offense in a deep freeze, Bob. Yeah. 30 yards total offense so far. You see Bob Rakowski, offensive coordinator for the Seahawks, and a very, very good game last week. I mean, tons of, week, of yardage nice. and uh, just cannot get it on track. And, uh, looking to, to, to knock the lid off the basket, I guess. Now, Chris Warren, uh, again, not much yardage. Baron Wortham comes up from his middle linebacking spot makes the stop. Well, they really haven't been able to establish anything. I mean, even the pass game has been uh, kind of lame. Right now, the, the pass game is not threatening them, them, so they're moving a lot of people up into the box. They're moving seven, eight people up into the box, and they're shutting down Chris Warren. At this point, John Freeze has got to get the passing game going, start to make that defense back off just a little bit. No game, second down and 10. Freeze slips to his left. Joey Galloway makes the catch close to the first down, but probably short. Darrell Lewis, who is back in there after uh, walking a little gingerly off the field earlier, yeah. makes the stop as Bratkowski, who has followed Dennis Erickson everywhere, as offensive coordinator at Wyoming, Washington State, Miami. And another Oiler is down. That is uh, Henry, Henry Ford, Ford, number 92. Well, that's... That's a big blow for them. They are a, uh, a strong run team in the middle. Well, we'll let Bratkowski pour over the charts a little bit more and see if he can get Houston's offense going. The NFL on NBC is brought to you by Dr. Pepper and your local Dr. Pepper bottler. Dr. Pepper is just what the doctor ordered. By Honda, vehicles designed to help simplify your life. And by HBO. It's not TV. It's HBO. Welcome back to Seattle. There is the injured oiler, Henry Ford, now up on his feet. His replacement, Mike Halepin. Now you see 92, Henry Ford, as he limps off. We'll take another look at the play. You've got him and, uh, and Gary Walker working in the inside. And uh, as Henry Ford gets knocked to the ground it's kind of tough to see but it looks like he was uh, maybe rolled up on by one of his old players there Henry Ford number one draft pick a couple of years ago from Arkansas led the Oilers with four and a half sacks last year tied with Anthony Cook so the Oilers have uh, had some players banged up so far they haven't lost anybody I've seen Daryl Lewis limp off he's continued to play Mel Gray has been a little banged up he's continued to play and so is Brad Hopkins, the left tackle on offense. So, And that's a point that Jeff Fisher had mentioned to us, how lucky and fortunate they were, Bob, that they had avoided the injury bug so far. Well, here's third down. They haven't got one yet. Two tight ends on third and short. The pitch to Warren runs into his own man. Did he get the first down? He ran into the house. Oh, Howard Ballard oh, on the right side. And I believe he picked up the first down. <laughs> I, I, they he are moving, up. They're moving the chains. And moving houses, <laughs> as in Howard Ballard. Oh, man. Watch here. B Ballard right there. Watch him as he starts to He'll make a block. And 
Boom. Yeah. Collision. Out of my way. He did He did kind of ole him, though. Howard yeah. kind of ole him and kind of said, hey, get on your way there, son. It appeared there was more contact with the house, but he does pick up the first down. He's back to pass. Wide open is Joey Galloway. And that's where Joey Galloway is best after he makes the catch. He picks up some more positive yards. He's got the ball to the 47. But Lewis you know, and Dishman brought him down. But you know what? It is it is Joey Galloway's speed that allows him to make that catch. They respect him, his speed so much. They think they're going to burn him at all times. Watch. He's going to go on. Watch, watch Darrell Lewis here. He's going to start to turn like it's going to be a, a deep route. And just about the time that Darrell Lewis turns his hip, Joey Galloway kind of turns, comes back with all, makes a catch. Nice cushion, and it's that, it's that threat of speed, of being burned deep, which allows him to have that cushion. Gain of 18 for Galloway. And off to Warren. You know, speaking of Joey Galloway, this has turned into somewhat of an Ohio State reunion yeah. of high draft picks. You've got Joey Galloway, the number one pick last year, and he roomed for five years with Houston's Chris Sanders. He was on the sidelines today. There is Chris Sanders, number three round pick out of Ohio State. And then you've got Eddie George, the rookie out of Ohio State. But uh, Joey Galloway uh, says, well, maybe uh, I can't beat him in the 40 yards if we're in a race, but uh, maybe after the next six, the second 60. <laughs> although got a chance. Although Chris Sanders, again, kind of poo-pooed that. Freeze to the air, complete to Joey Galloway. And that's another first down. For Seattle, Chris Dishman there a little late. Well, I tell you what, like I said before, here's a guy uh, that is being his speed is being is being respected. Watch Dishman here. I mean, these not also defensive guys have to. They've got to be aware where the first down marker is. Dishman way too much. I mean, obviously they're in the zone and he's got to be back there, but he's got to be at least be close enough to the receiver in the zone to make a play on the guy. Seattle finally getting the ball going through the air to Joey Galloway after repeated attempts to get Warren some room. Failed. This is Warren again. He gets better yard at that time. Maybe five yards before he's brought down by Robert Young. See, as I said, you get the pass game going, the linebackers have to loosen up a, a little bit more. They can't crowd the line of scrimmage. So that gives you a little bit more room up front. Also, if you're noticing, they're giving the ball to Chris Warren a little bit deeper in the backfield. Instead of just handing off right next to the quarterback, he's taking it back to him, giving him the room he needs to find the hole and accelerate. It was Warren who rushed for a career-high 185 yards in his last game against the Oilers a couple of years ago. Picks up five there. And from the 37, Seahawks trying to keep this drive alive. Nice play action by Murray, but he's got his tight end, Carlister Crumpler. And Crumpler has another first down for Seattle. Blaine Bishop makes the stop, but uh, a little more imaginative offense now by Seattle has Houston off guard. A nice little play action boot. I think we've got uh, number 38, Max Strong, down on the far side of the field. He got caught up in the end of that pile, but uh, a nice bootleg, a little play action boot. And uh, it, it kind of matches up Baron Wortham up against number 87, Carlos R. Crumpler. Not a match. Still tied at three in Seattle. Back after this. Perfect for any game, Domino's has the perfect play. Choose from three delicious crusts. There's classic hand toss, crunchy thin crust, or go deep with thick ultimate deep dish. The NFL on NBC is brought to you by oh, Domino's Pizza. Time. Call now to enjoy a hot and delicious Domino's Pizza by halftime. For hot and wow, call Domino's okay. now. Dan Hicks, Bob Golick back in Seattle. Max Strong now walking the sidelines for Seattle. First and 10 from the Euler 24 in a drive which began at its own 18-yard line. Joey Galloway figuring big in this series for Seattle with three catches. Going over the middle, it is Crumpler again and Crumpler inside the 20-yard line. Yeah, now, now let's go back to the last play because this could have been very serious. Max Strong was blocking for Carlos Der Crumpler as you see him walking it off here on the sidelines as all good football players do. But number 38 is going to be out ahead of the play. He's right, there he is right there ahead of the play blocking. And you see number 52, Baron Wortham, land on his ankle from behind. 
And uh, boy, that I tell you, got to hurt. But uh, looking at Strong now, looks like he's able to walk it off. Warren gets maybe a couple on the second down call. And the clock continuing to click. 6.42 left in the first half. Well, it looks like Henry Ford's healthy. A yeah. big, had a slight sprain, and now, boy, showing some quickness, getting out there and making a, a play out on the perimeter. Oilers have been walking off, limping off, but they've all managed to get back in there. So as you take a look at Ford, this is an impressive drive for Seattle. And you talked before about Brian Blades being nicked out. He's been out this entire series. Ricky Prohl, who we were told would spell him quite a bit, is in. He's slotted to the right side as Freeze rolls right. Nothing there. And he'll throw this one out of bounds. Now, this last series, Dan, they have you have watched Daryl Lewis. Remember the first, the first, before this series, they were playing a lot of zone. And uh, Joey Galloway had all the time in the world. Now, these last couple plays, Daryl Lewis has moved up late. He's come up to go bump. And they've been playing real tight zone. They did get one off to Carlos de Crumpler as a safety valve in the play before this. But this one, just nobody open in man-to-man -man coverage. Todd Peterson, good from 25 yards out. Spot this one at the 25, so a 35-yard attempt. He has made 22 of his last 23 field goal attempts. And he just gets that inside the right upright. So it's been a field goal battle so far in favor of Seattle. Well, on NBC, interconference powers collide. Thurman Thomas, Jim Kelly, and the Buffalo Bills battle Ricky Waters and the Eagles. Or two top quarterbacks clash as Dan Marino leads the Dolphins against Jim Harbaugh and the Colts. Or regional action, the NFL on NBC next Sunday. 6-0-1 left in the first half. The Seahawks with two field goals over Del Greco's one. And Steve McNair, who has provided Seattle with one of those field goals with his costly interception deep in his own territory, is the man for Houston today with Chris Chandler out with a groin injury. Mel Gray awaiting the Peterson kick at the two. And this time the Seahawks special teams is there to knock him down at the 18. Ronnie Harris. And Mel Gray taking his time getting up. And Mel Gray now still on the turf. He got uh, he got sliced pretty good there. Good uh, with good leverage by the coverage team as they came down keeping their lanes. And uh, watch, you're going to see him. I don't think they, they they hit him that hard. I think just the old injury. He takes a shot right above the uh, the knee, but I got a feeling this is just the old injury just coming back to haunt him. He did not play last week. A back injury, and it appears after taking several shots, will Gray get back up after that one? Mel Gray is up off the turf, but after 11 years of this kickoff return specialty duty, how many hits can you take, Bob? Also an update, uh, we saw Max Strong also hurt in the last series. Uh, he is had a strained right knee and is questionable for return. Well, Joe Nash has joined the lineup for the Seahawks. Fake to Rodney Thomas. McNair wheels to his right, and he's got a man for good guardage, Derek Russell. And Russell still spinning, finally knocked out of bounds at the, about the 47-yard line. Williams and Blackman knocked Russell out of bounds. He's the third wide receiver for Houston. Well, he's, McNair had some time this time. On this play, he had some time. Remember the last time he ran this boot? He, uh, he was basically being chased by a couple of very large people. This time, we're going to watch him boot out to the left side of your screen. He's got time. He's, got, uh, he's not being hassled. Has plenty of time to f find Russell wide open. You mentioned Joe Nash in there, number 72, playing in his 211th game. 15th season now for Nash. No Seahawk has played more. McNair on first and 10. Incomplete to the near side. He wanted Frank Wycheck the H-back. But it was uh, quite a story with uh, Joe Nash returning to the Seahawk uh, lineup <laughs> this week. In fact, they had kept his locker as somewhat of a shrine. I mean, he... Did not get his contract renewed after the 14 seasons, but uh, sentimentally, they just kind of kept his locker open until the last preseason game when Cortez Kennedy came in the locker room. They actually got Nash on the phone and said, Joe must go, Joe must go. They cleaned out his locker, and Sam Adams moved into his locker. 
as Rodney Thomas Sam Adams gets making, the carry. And Sam Adams, great penetration, making a hit. Now, Sam Adams, as we look at Sam Adams here, we have to say that Joe Nash was offered the locker back. But uh, basically, Joe Nash said, you know what, all those years of being next to Cortez Kennedy, that was enough. <laughs> and uh, uh, Joe Nash, good job of uh, making sure the running back was down. Uh, the one thing he's finding out is that you may be in cardiovascular shape, you may be strong, but once you start hitting again, it's a whole different ball game. Seattle fans have woken up, third down and long. McNair avoids one tackler, gets it out nicely to Rodney Thomas, but Thomas well short of the first down. Stopped at midfield by Winston Moss, combining with Carlton Gray. Yeah, good job by Winston. He picked him up uh, very, very quickly, crossing the middle. And Winston's, uh, I'll tell you what, you talk about a guy, he's, he's an older guy, been around for a while. You see him there, number 55. Just kind of uh, keying him, coming out of the backfield. Jumps him, he is a quick linebacker. Look at how aggressive. How good he is at closing the distance, he, uh, the, the space between him and the receiver, especially in a quick guy like Thomas. But Houston forced to punt once again after that impressive opening drive. McNair and the Oilers haven't done much. Ronnie Harris lets it bounce wow. and it takes a great Houston bounce. Reggie Roby in his 14th year, one of the best in the business at uh, pinning teams back. Let me tell Roby to show some emotion here. It looked like he was upset with that kick. <laughs> he wanted it uh, closer than it, where it is, just outside the five-yard line. I guess, I guess he didn't realize the English he had put on the ball. Well, Bob, I know you've been looking forward to this, so let's yeah, get right into yeah. it. Now, more from Mike Ditka's Alien Guide to Football. Okay, so you're the quarterback, we're the receivers. Now what? You go long. Yeah. You go to the left. You run a button ball. What about me, coach? You come stand next to me. That is third rock. Sunday's Bob, I know that... Uh, I want to know what kind of professional training you can do. be a fledgling actor yourself. As that ball is complete to Joey Galloway. Across the 20 for a first down. Quickly, though. Got to get it out of the way. Your thoughts on Mike Ditka's acting ability. Well, I, know, I know that... Uh, at I know after football, I was saved by the bell and got into the acting. But I don't know. I don't think Ditka's got any training. Look at, once again, Joey Galloway. Look at, look at how much space. We're talking five yards between him and Chris Dishman. I mean, a wide open, and Freeze is going to find Joey Galloway all day long as he takes a shot there at the end of the play. But, uh, boy, too much respect for Joey Galloway is going to be a bad thing. And Warren gets the ball. I tell you, Freeze was really uh, beaten up last week. Not only did he suffer an ankle injury, but on the very same play, he told us uh, there was some cartilage separated in his uh, rib cage. He was very sore. I said, oh, how sore is it? He goes, well, it hurts every time I sneeze. I said, you're going to go out and play an NFL game. <laughs> after. Just don't sneeze. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's, that's something that we talked about that. The only thing you can do is to put a little Novocaine in there, and it's you know, there you as in your chest you're cavity. You're used to get in your shoulder or in your, in your nice buttock for or a something. Needle. Oh. Yeah, but scraping the bone in your rib cage, oh, I've had it done. It's ugly. He dumps it off to Warren. Oilers are right there to collapse on yeah. Warren. See, Chris Warren can't run sideline to sideline. I mean, when he gets the ball like that, he might as well turn his shoulders towards the goal line and start running no matter what kind of yardage he has or who is who's in front of him because when he starts turning sideways like that he, I mean he just doesn't have that cutting ability to make that break and uh, turn it up field especially when you got an aggressive oiler defense like this and look at Barrow get in there it was uh, that's the two minute more them who made the stop yep. and he really is the best sideline to sideline defender for the Oilers at the two minute warning in Seattle 6-3 Seahawks 38-year-old Jeff Fisher, the youngest coach in the NFL now that uh, Cincinnati's Dave Shula is no longer coaching the Bengals. His team was 1 of 13 last week on third down conversions. Look at Seattle, what they do on third downs today. Not good at all trying to take care of that on third and 13. Oh. And a nice catch by Brian Blades will take care of that in a hurry. That's what he does best. 
Goes over the middle, makes a diving clutch catch for Seattle. Yeah, you know, we talk about Joey Galloway, and most of the time you're going to see him wandering the sidelines. Not that he won't cross the middle, but Brian Blades is the guy that will, and, and his ribs will attest to it, is the guy that will cross the middle and take the shots. In the hurry up, give us to Warren. And he gains a couple up the middle. Clock continuing to roll with a minute 28. And the timeout is called by Seattle. And we'll remind you that coming up at halftime, we'll be sending you to our New York studio, Domino's Pizza NFL on NBC Halftime Report. Greg Gumbel and company get you caught up on all the action from of the NFL season. That's coming up at halftime. You believe and an interesting development in that uh, Eagles Cowboys affair that uh, what happened on that one? Well, yeah, you gotta tell us. Should I leave it the suspense yeah, it. for yeah, the for the halftime highlights Ooh. and the guys in the studio? Okay, tell them. Well, Philadelphia knocked off the Cowboys, 31 to 21. Ouch! And that ball was in Texas. And I can't believe that the Cincinnati Bengals came back. There you see the Miami Dolphins and the New England Patriots, another AFC East matchup. Miami trying to get back on track. Well. Pittsburgh uh, dismantled St. Louis today, and that is uh, who the Oilers are trying to catch in the AFC Central. And Pittsburgh runs its record to seven and two. You see a Buffalo not beating, beating up on Washington, seven and one Washington. Minute 28 left in the first half. Seattle trying to put more points on the board before they head to the locker room. And on second down and seven, freeze to the air, and that is complete for the first down to Blades. Steve Jackson, the nickelback, made the stop. And the clock continuing to roll. Seattle with two of its timeouts left. Now they're playing a much, much tighter, but John Freeze, as he's proven in the last few weeks, can really lace that ball in there. Freeze, quick drop. And oh. It's complete to Galloway. And Galloway puts on the moves. Marcus Robertson made the stop. Well, Dishman, you see Chris Dishman there is just basically saying, my bad, my bad. He saw that he saw an opportunity to make a play. Watch him. He's going to come up. He's going for the ball. This is all ball here for him. And uh, sometimes you're you're the hero, and sometimes, well, you got to rely on your buddies, just like on that play. Well, 30 career interceptions for Dishman, and uh, Jeff Fisher was telling us that he's been feeling the pressure to try to pick one up. Yep. He tried to get one there, but uh, that cost his team. And he has been playing well off of Galloway all game long. One minute left. Pump fake by Freeze. Once Galloway overthrew him. Actually, he wanted uh, Galloway, but Daryl Lewis stepped in and made the interception. That was uh, well over Galloway's head. It yeah. looked like he just wanted to throw it away, but he was unaware. Well, what? I mean, Lewis. what's also Joey Galloway doesn't seem to be in full stride either. He's just kind of like cruising down the sidelines here. And. Uh, Freeze just laying the ball up there. This was a total ball that Joey Galloway was supposed to go up. He was supposed to go up there and get it himself. I mean, that was, that's what that was. I'm going to lay the ball up. You use your speed and your talent to go up and get it. But Daryl Lewis right there to make the snag. Minus six giveaway takeaway ratio for Seattle. And that, uh, if you take a look at the Jets who topped that list, that does not translate into a very good record. That is the fifth interception of the season for Daryl Lewis. And with 55 seconds left, McNair and the Oilers set up at the 20. They do have all three of the timeouts. Eddie George gets the call. And he's got a couple across the 20. A late flag comes in. Michael McCrary on the stop of George. Boy, that was a late flag. Holding <laughs> call against Houston. Either he couldn't find it in his pocket, he couldn't find that uh, the flag. I just figured that somebody better call this. Holding 74 offense. Still first down. You don't see very many penalties called on Bruce Matthews. You know, a guy of his uh, age, his maturity. Bruce Matthews, a guy of that age. Well, no. Watch, watch the referee here. He's, he's going for the pull. He sees it. Oh, no flag. No okay. flag. He dropped it. <laughs> First and 20 now. Eddie George pushed back. He'll lose even more. And 
Houston is backed up in this series as time ticks away and another player is down. There's a scuffle going Actually, on up there. There's a scuffle they, going yeah. on at the 26 yard line. Well, uh, I'll tell you who more. I'll tell you what, Seahawk players, or Oiler better players, better go there and help out their buddies. There's like seven Seahawk players. Here you see in time oh, off, there's number, a, anyway, Chris Sanders Seattle. taking a shot. Number, number two. two. Oh, man. This Selwyn Jones did not off. like the fact that he was being, his legs were being thrown at. You can't help it. You know, remember on our pregame show on, yeah. on NBC, they were talking about the, the Kansas City, Dale Carter, Dale Carter coming out and undercutting uh, some of the you players. Know, you know, you're exactly Lionel Washington, to be specific. You're exactly right, and it seems to be this new trend, because anytime you see a wide receiver going out there, I mean, you see these little guys kind of face-to-face, -face, kind of pushing on each other, and, uh, boy, this going for the knees thing, uh, I don't know if this is being coached, or if these guys are just uh, getting lazy and are trying to t take them down instead of stay with the block. I don't know what it is, but it's something that needs to be addressed. I mean, I, I, I'm all for aggressiveness, but, I mean, there's just some stuff out there that just doesn't need to be happening. Well, that was, uh, it was Lionel Washington who was cut under right. about the knees by Dale, uh, Carter. Dale Carter. I'd say Marty Schottenheimer defended his uh, player, Dale Carter, while Mike Shanahan of the Broncos had some heated words as to the kind of block. Seti George on the carry. The clock continuing to roll. Now with 23 seconds left, McCrary over there to put the wraps on George again. Well, now we're starting to see the, the defense that we saw last week for the Seattle Seahawks. This uh, revitalized defense uh, that has been basically, Seattle. I don't want to say out of nowhere, but you're starting to see a lot of players who haven't been stepping up, who haven't been making big plays. They now are coming up and making the big plays. And uh, it's just, just not on Cortez Kennedy anymore. And anybody who tells me that Cortez Kennedy is overrated, as you see in some of these articles in some of these national sports publications. You're, you're even, getting more specific I by the second. Getting, yeah, okay. I don't want to get any more okay. specific saying that you know, he's one of the most overrated out there. Hey, there was a time where the only guy making any of the specific, any of the big plays was Cortez Kennedy. Everybody had potential, but now they're all stepping up and helping him out. Cortez reported in the best shape of his seven-year career, according to the Seahawks coaches, as he came into this season and has been playing the best of his career since then. Eddie George gets wrapped up again, and this has been a dismal showing for the Oilers in this, what will probably be the final play of the first half. McCrary was in again on George. So, a great first half for Steve McNair in his very first start of this season. But the Seahawks have the lead at halftime, 6-3, to three, over Jeff Fisher and the Oilers. And we'll be sending you to New York and the Domino's Pizza NFL and NBC Halftime Report after a word from the NFL. Domino's Pizza for hot and wow called Domino's. Now. Welcome back to our studios here in New York, everyone, as we take a look at some of the noteworthy games of the day and their effect on various races. Begin with the game between San Diego and Indianapolis, won by the Chargers today, 26 to 19. What effect does that have on the AFC East? Take a look. Buffalo at 5 and 3 in action now, as is New England. Indianapolis now 5 and 4. Miami in action now at 4 and 4, and the New York Jets 1 and 8. We talk about the value of backup quarterbacks. Joe Gibbs, how about Sean Salisbury coming in, filling in for Stan Humphreys for a big win on the road for San Diego? It is a big decision. The backup quarterback, hey, there's a good chance through the process of a long season, your quarterback's going to go down. I think many times that's one of the biggest decisions a coaching staff and organization makes. You put a guy in a game like Salisbury, you don't expect him to win every game for you, but you don't want him to lose them. Don't turn the ball over, don't make that. They did that today. The other thing you got to give a lot of credit to their defense, they kept Indy out once they got into the plus territory. They were inside the 20 all day, but they couldn't get any touchdowns out. All they got was field goal, so a lot of credit to the defense stepped up today. How about the route that the NFC East took today? Philadelphia went into Dallas and beat the Cowboys by a score of 31 to 21. A look at the standings as they exist now in the NFC East. Washington in action now at seven and one has to uh, win to stay a game up on Philadelphia. Dallas at five and four. The Giants at four and five. Arizona three and six. If you're going to talk back up quarterbacks, Joe, Ty Detmer has done a whale of a job for the Eagles. Well, he did. I, I tell you, the thing I, I was.
impressed with with Philadelphia. They were physical today. They ran the football, 116 yards rushing against a Dallas defense, and three long drives of over 10 plays or more. I thought they were physical all day and sharp and went after them. But at the very least, Joe, that game should have gone into overtime. Clearly, you've got a situation in that football game with Troy Aikman as your quarterback where you expect the veteran quarterback to be able to make the plays down on the goal line. That's 24-21. The only the worst case scenario is you turn the football over to your field goal team, you get the tie out of it, you go into overtime at home, Troy Eggman with the big interception. Eagles go home with a big, big win. Now, the Green Bay Packers, winners at home today against the Detroit Lions, and you have to wonder, is this a Packer juggernaut now? Remember, they've lost all those wide receivers, and still, Brett Favre continues to deliver today with Don Beatty. Well, he really does. He had four touchdown passes. Again, they had different people step up. Mike Holmgren has done a great job. This club reminds me a lot of the 49ers. With all the injuries the 49ers have had over the years, they seem to plug people in and get the job done. And he's doing that. Now, the thing that Mike told us a couple weeks ago, he's staying with that running game. And the running game is really helping us. It's giving them balance. All right, and the Pittsburgh Steelers, a winner today. Big time, 42 to six over the St. Louis Rams. Remember, we were feeling sorry for the Steelers on opening day when they lost Greg Lloyd. I don't think anybody's feeling sorry for them. Yeah, I, I got to tell you, I was one of those guys, and, and I'll tell you, they're winning with defense. They're rushing the football. We've talked to many times on the show what Bettis has meant to them, and I, I tell you, right now, they are on a roll. In Pittsburgh's schedule, they don't play a team with a winning record until the middle of December. This is the team that's going to have home field advantage. And we've said it before. We'll say it again. Those guys sure love to play football for Bill Cowher. Don't you got they? it. Our NFL on NBC halftime activity. Activities continue. Hi, I'm Steve Largent, checking out a little personal history at the Pro Football Hall of Fame. Now I can get right back into the action, thanks to an exciting and unique attraction called the 100 Yard Universe. This theater actually rotates, allowing the fans to follow the players on game day from the locker room to the field. So take a trip to the Pro Football Hall of Fame in Canton, Ohio. You'll see NFL action like you've never seen it before in the 100-yard universe. This message furnished by the National Football League. This is the Domino's Pizza NFL on NBC Halftime Report, brought to you by Domino's Pizza. For hot and wow, call Domino's. Now. And those of you who have been watching Houston versus Seattle, welcome back to New York. Along with Joe Gibbs, Mike Ditka, Chris Collinsworth, I'm Greg Gumbel. Let's run down scores and highlights for you. Beginning with the game at Foxborough, they have just gone to halftime. The Patriots and the Dolphins are tied at 14. Two of the best throwing quarterbacks in the AFC, Marino and Bledsoe. And you've got two rushing touchdowns for Kareem Abdul-Jabbar and two for Curtis Martin. Well, that's true, but I tell you what Miami's doing. They're rushing the ball. Now, New England hasn't been able to rush it very well. They have to depend on Bledsoe's arm. It's really a good, solid football game. But I think the strength of the game again right now is Miami running the football because they did it the first time they played him and that's why they beat him. If they continue, that's how they're going to win this game if they can win it. Curtis Martin has two touchdowns. He's nine carries for nine yards in the first half. In Minnesota, low scoring football game. The Kansas City Chiefs leading the Vikings by a score of seven to nothing. What's the story in this game, Joe? Well, the story is both these offenses are struggling and they continue to struggle. Mike's laughing over here. Minnesota's rushed for eight yards, okay? Kansas City for 73. And that's the edge, really, right now. This would be a great game with both offenses having a tough time doing anything to kick some field goals, but neither team can kick a field goal. They both <laughs> miss field goals. Marcus Allen, one-yard run for a touchdown. That is 110th rushing touchdown of his NFL career. That ties Walter Payton for number one all-time. In Buffalo, Redskins with a seven-game winning streak on the line, trailing the Bills 17-7 to at halftime. And in Seattle, the game that you are watching, the Seahawks by a field goal over the Houston Oilers. Earlier today, in Indianapolis, Chargers knocked off the Colts. 26-19, the final score. Bad day for Colt quarterback Jim Harbaugh. Five turnovers for him today, four on interceptions. This pick by Kurt Govea set up a Charger touchdown. Junior Seau back in the lineup after missing a game with a pair of injured knees. He forces the Harbaugh fumble, recovered by Chris Mims at the Indy 42-yard line. And six plays later, San Diego cashed in. Sean Salisbury finds Tony Martin. This is a 22-yard touchdown. Martin leading the NFL with 10 TD catches. Chargers win it 26-19, 23 of their 26 points coming off turnovers. In Dallas, the Philadelphia Eagles knocked off the Cowboys today, 31-21. to Emmett Smith trying to fire his club up before kickoff. 10-7 Dallas in the second, just before halftime tied. Detmer, his own number, takes it in from the sixth. Eagles led 14-10 at halftime. 
It was 21-13 Philly in the fourth. Cowboys driving. Emmett Smith from seven yards out scores his second touchdown of the day. Aikman threw a pass for a two-point conversion. The game was tied at 21. It was 24-21. Eagles under a minute to play. Troy Aikman off balance, throws into the end zone, picked off by James Willis. He laterals to Troy Vincent, and he will come back across the field, find some running room, and take it the rest of the way for a touchdown. Eagles' first win in Dallas since 1991. The final score, 31-21. to Chris, this is a big, big win on the road for the Eagles. Yeah, it sure was, and Ty Detmer was absolutely sensational today, but it was one of those days you just don't expect Troy Aikman to make that big mistake that he made at the end of the game. It was 24-21. At the very least, Dallas has to come out of that with a field goal overtime at home. You have to like their chances. Really a blown opportunity by Troy Aikman. You'll see the Eagles here on NBC next week. They host the Buffalo Bills. In Green Bay, the Packers beat the Detroit Lions 28-18. to The final score at Lambeau Field. Lions quarterback Scott Mitchell sidelined with sore ribs. His replacement, Don Mikowski, gives to Barry Sanders can make an 18-yard touchdown run oh so exciting. He had 105 yards rushing on 14 carries in the first half and at 152 on the day. But the Pack came out smoking in the second half. Favre to Terry Mickens. Diving catch, his second TD. Pack went up 21-10. Favre, four touchdown passes, 25 on the year. The Packers win it 28-18. to The Steelers keep on rolling. They've won seven of eight now. They win it 42 to six over the Rams. In Baltimore, the Bengals on a Doug Pelfrey field goal at the final gun win it 24-21. Bengals guard um, the scar Scott Brumfield uh, with a spine injury was taken to the University of Maryland Medical Center. He is undergoing x-rays and diagnostic tests as we speak. In Atlanta, the Falcons win their first of the year 20-17 to over the Carolina Panthers. The Panthers fall to 5-4. At the Meadowlands, the Giants a winner, 16 to 8 over the Cardinals. Giants improved to 4 and 5. They've won four of their last six games. And in Chicago, the Bears have won two in a row. They are 4 and 5 on the year. They beat Tampa Bay by a score of 13 to 10. A quick programming note: tonight on Dateline Sunday, immediately after our football coverage, we'll bring you Jane Pauley's interview with Michael Jordan. The NBA season got underway this weekend, and then on Third Rock from the Sun, a special guest appearance by the one and only Mike Ditka. They're set for the second half in Seattle. Let's send you back to Dan Hicks and Bob Golick. Halftime in Seattle. The Seahawks in a battle of the fuel goals so far. 6-3 over the Houston Oilers. Uh, Dan Hicks back with Bob Golick. And we might have expected Houston to struggle a little bit on offense, Bob, with Steve McNair in right. there for Chris Chandler. But... Uh, Really, it's been somewhat of a surprise as to Seattle's offensive woes after the great showing last week against San Diego. Exactly. I mean, you saw Chris Warren last week with 146 yards rushing, another 40 yards receiving. So far today, I mean, nothing. This game has been been horrible. Both teams offensively. Uh, you look at McNair, we talked about on the one side, passing yardage for uh, Houston, only 56 yards. But then again, at Seattle, we expected more rushing yardage. Only 23 yards for the Seattle Seahawks and Chris Warren. And uh, both teams just not doing very, very well. Of course, line halftime stats also revealing a turnover apiece by each yep. team, Freeze and McNair. Each throwing an interception. This is Steve Broussard taking Al Del Grico's opening second half kick. Just out of bounds across the 25. Well, Steve McNair's first NFL start of this season, the third in his career. Let's check out how he's matching up with John Freeze. Oops. Not, not as good as I think they had expected. A young guy, been waiting, trying to come of, uh, come of age here. Only 56 yards, 50% completion rate. But uh, John Freeze uh, has been able to find his favorite receiver, Joey Galloway, just a little bit more. That one interception uh, cost the Oilers three points as Todd Peterson turned that into three points as you take a look at John Freeze and the running back situation now Eddie George much more productive than Chris Warren look at the average yards per carry under two yeah but you got to think that at least half of those yardage for Eddie George came in that first series from uh, from uh, during the game Chris Warren had been averaging over four yards a carry coming into the game he's in the flat pick it up, pick it up, pick it up. Pick it up. but it was a lateral Oh, the ball was live. <laughs> Warren didn't realize it at the start. Well, neither did Baron Wortham, who would have had a touchdown had he realized that it was a, uh, a lateral. And, uh, boy, talking about a guy that's going to get chewed out on Monday, both players probably, but Baron Wortham, number 52, you see sliding out there late. As a defensive player, you're told the ball's in the ground, you pick it up. 
Not only did uh, Warren not realize it, but you're right, Wortham. The ball right there. Sleeping as well on oh. that play. Second down and six. And Warren. And maybe two yards, that's about it. He's wrapped up at the line of scrimmage so that Houston Oilers defensive front has been doing a good job. But we saw them get some holes for Warren in mm -hmm. the first half when they went to Galloway and they started spreading it out a little bit. Exactly. Once they start getting the passing game going, the run game by itself can't. It just doesn't seem to be able to exist. You know, we're watching uh, Chris Warren. The other thing we're seeing in the run game is when they're giving the ball to Chris Warren deep in the backfield giving him a chance to see more, get more vision on the offensive line, where the holes are opening, he seems to be doing better. Warren, very deep in the Seattle backfield on third and four, three wideouts in for Seattle. And freeze his pass, completes to Mike Pritchard, and Pritchard picks up the first down. Darrell Lewis on the coverage. Boy, was he... He hit, though. John Freeze was hit. I believe it was number 92, Henry Ford. Now, here, let's take a look at the down in the pits once again here in the rush. I, I want to say it was uh, 92 coming up the middle right as the ball's thrown, right a shot to the ribs. And with John Freeze and sore ribs, you see 92 right there sitting on your screen? Working between the double team. Henry Ford. Yep. Beautiful. Some good penetration. He was among uh, the Oilers wounded in the first half, but it's back in the game. Play action now to Warren. Freeze over the middle. Wide open is Brian Blades. Blades down to the Oiler 32 before Marcus Robertson brings him down. And Blades also banged up before this game gets up very slowly. Well, Blaine Bishop, number 23, was in cover. John Blades. And uh, for whatever reason, it looked like Blaine Bishop turned to look to the uh, quarterback. You're going to see Bishop come, uh, uh, Blaine Bishop right in the middle of your screen here in a second as he comes across, right, just trailing behind Brian Blades. Also, you got to you got to count on your safeties too. Marcus Robinson, should, Robinson should have been there to come up and make a hit. Four catches, 69 yards for Blades. Will Warren get a little more room to work with after they've opened it up? Just a little bit. Very little. Very little. <laughs> Michael Barrow makes the stop for Houston's defense. Very tough to, against the run. This team is, uh, they, they know how to play that run game. I, the, the linebackers are very aggressive. If you watch, I mean, some teams that aren't as successful versus the run, the linebackers don't hit the line of scrimmage. They'll kind of sit back and they'll wait for the running back to come to, to you. This defense, these linebackers attack. They know where the open gaps are. They know where their defensive linemen are. They hit those gaps, and that's why you see so many uh, shots of tackles for losses and at the line of scrimmage. They're smart, too. They get faxed every Tuesday night. The game plan is Freeze takes another hit. Him and Henry Ford are uh, getting to be good friends back there, or enemies. Freeze knew he had to throw that one again. Henry Ford, 92, one more time. Watch him. Working up against Kevin Mawai. Nice little swim move. Putting uh, Mawai down and uh, gets a nice last second hit on John Freeze. John Freeze just basically threw that ball away. His uh, The coverage was, was so tight he had to throw that out of bounds. It's a third down and six. over the middle incomplete he wanted Ricky Prohl and Prohl took a shot by Marcus Robertson well wherever Marcus Robertson was if it, if he wasn't there for that Brian Blades catch he was certainly there to make the play on Ricky Prohl so uh, that'll bring up fourth down and six and Todd Peterson is setting up for what would be a 47 yard field goal that is the longest field goal he has this season well, we'd like to find out about their success in red zone but they're not making it to the red zone Todd Peterson's kick is no good Peterson no good from 47 he's two for three on the game so it remains 6-3 the NFL on NBC is brought to you by Dr. Pepper and your local Dr. Pepper bottler. Dr. Pepper is just what the doctor ordered. By genuine Chevrolet, the cars more Americans trust. By Castrol, official motor oil sponsor of the NFL. And by Brewery Fresh Bud Light, who reminds you that fresh beer tastes better.
beautiful area in the Northwest, the Great Northwest, and indoors. You know, this is like you know this is like this is like it's a nice day out. And we you want you want to go out, come indoors to do this game. You want to go honestly. out and play, but your mom will make, is making you play in the basement. <laughs> no, you have to stay in the basement. Might play. Oh, it's nice outside. Let's get this game outside. Just 115 total yards for Houston so far as McNair sets up the order offense. Wow. And that what one, a, what a play by Wooden. Down one. by Wooden, intended for Wycheck. I mean, and talk about a dangerous play, too. To come over the back of somebody like that, obviously always the threat of a referee saying, well, your hand was on him. Watch here. You're going to see the right side of your screen. Terry Wooden is right there making a move on Wycheck. Good play. Kept his back hand off and just reached over with his right hand. I don't know if he tipped the ball or if he just distracted him. Well, uh, Terry Wooden wants another interception. He had an interception in the first half, which led to a Seahawk field goal. 6-3, 11-18 in the third. McNair handing off Eddie George. And Eddie George just across the 40. Well, the injury report on Brian Blades is a shoulder separation. He's in the locker room being looked over. Well, they're trying to get Eddie George back out there again and get him uh, establishing the run game like they did in the first series of the game where he just pretty much owned the Seattle Seahawks defense. But uh, the, the Seattle defense really getting good penetration up front and the linebackers filling up. That time, uh, the linebackers coming up and make a nice play, keeping it from being a big play. Eddie George takes a rest on third and six. Here comes the pressure on McNair, tipped at the line of scrimmage. And that was Sam Adams. A flag has been thrown in the Seahawk defensive secondary. But Sam Adams at 6'3", 297, got a hand on the McNair pass. Well, some of the Oilers that were standing near the referees are kind of indicating it was against Seattle. And it is, as Johnny Greer indicates and as Dennis Erickson disagrees. Yeah, Sam Adams tipped the ball. The ball popped up and uh, very close to Michael Sinclair reaching out and grabbing it. Holding. 30, defense. First down. Costly penalty on Corey Harris. And that gives the Oilers a first down at the 42. Well, you know, you see a lot of the bumping and the grabbing when somebody's uh, in, in danger of losing their man. If they have man-to-man -man coverage, sometimes they'll get that grab. And, hey, sometimes they see it, sometimes they don't. Corey Harris, a former Oiler. He was a third-round pick of Houston. And now, the yeah. officials are saying perhaps it, the penalty would not give them right. the first down. It didn't look like it, but they had indicated it. So now they've moved it back. It looked like it was third and six at the time of the penalty. The penalty will be marked from the previous spot, five yards, an automatic first down. And there you have it. <laughs> Glad they figured that out. <laughs> hey, could you uh, could you lean over and ask Paul Tagliabue? Oh wait, he left. He's gone. We had Paul Tagliabue next to us in Ken Baring's uh, box. First and ten, forty-six. Tags has left the building. Could he be meeting with Jeff George? Rumor monger. Houston with a first down at the forty-six. They trail it six-three. Wow. Rodney Thomas, another flag comes in. That is that is holding on the Houston Oilers because of one thing. Sam Adams' amazing penetration. Kevin Donnelly, I believe they're going to call Donnelly. Just, I mean, there's nothing he could do to stop Sam Adams. He was so quick. Holding, 77, yep. offense. Still first down. Now he says, what? <laughs> it's, it's all he, that's all he could do. Watch this. Watch Sam Adams. Right there, man. Watch him get off. So quick. And the leverage he gets. And the only thing that Donnelly can do is kind of like wrap his... I don't even think he tried to grab him. It's just his arms ended up there. So now it's first and 20 in what has been uh, an ugly beginning to the second half and a low-scoring game. McNair dumps it over the middle, and that will be dropped for a loss. Sam Adams wraps up Ronnie Harmon. 
You know, you can only go so conservative with this offense. I mean, that's a nice conservative dump over the middle for McNair, but I mean, we haven't first seen, and 20, they need some yards. We haven't seen much air from Air McNair, and I know that, the, you know, the, obviously the, the ball control and moving the short passes is one thing, but you'd think that they would open it up and try and stretch the field, at least get that defense stretched a little bit, give them a little bit more room. But uh, you remember that middle screen early in the game got him to Rodney Thomas, got him a huge game. There is Chris Chandler. He'll only play unless McNair gets injured. Second and 22 for Houston. And this time McNair swings it to the right side to Rodney Thomas, and Thomas has the first down. Carlton Gray finally brought Thomas down, but it's a big, big game for Rodney Thomas, the backup to Eddie George. Well, somebody, somebody blew a coverage there. Watch here, coming across the field, you're seeing the linebackers both jumping the same crossing receiver. I don't know if it was Winston Moss or uh, number 30, Corey Harris, who both initially had gone with the crossing uh, receiver. Then uh, Corey Harris obviously reacted late to get back over there, but somebody missed coverage wide open for a first down. Rodney Thomas, 33-yard gain. He almost had 1,000 yards on the ground last year, but lost his starting job to Eddie George. And here is Eddie George looking for a hole. Scott pulled Cortez Kennedy and company. Man, can you talk about a wall? I mean, that, these guys, I mean, if, if they're not getting penetration, they're setting up this wall. And here, watch Terry Wooden. And this is, we talk about the wooden factor that, uh, that Winston Moss talks about. Look at this. Missing, you know, making, making blockers miss. Staying free, keeping the legs going, making the hit, and then also saying, you know what, I think I'll, uh, I think I'll take this from you. Impressive Seahawk defense. I mean, he can, this guy can cover, rush, play the run. Quick drop by McNair. And it's complete to Rod Lewis. Carlton Gray delivers a hit. What a play. What a play. Beautiful job. Watch, just a quick throw out here to the right-hand side of your screen. Carlton Gray comes up. Hey, he's a big man. Roderick Lewis, don't take him high. Go in there and cut him, knock him down, and uh, Carlton Gray does that. What about that play last week by Carlton Gray when he stripped the ball and returned oh. the fumble some 62 yards? Oh, Talking about a ball bouncing the right way. Third down and eight. McNair, there's that uh, quarterback draw by design, and McNair may have the first down. Winston Moss finally drags him down, but uh, McNair picked up the first down. You know what? It's a, it's a very effective play. And uh, you know who does it better than anybody else? And actually, I knew this firsthand because I watched him run past me a couple of times. That's John Elway. And always down in the red zone. You know, we th and we were told that they were going to run this quarterback draw right here. Uh, down in the, in, near the red zone. Or when it was like third and three to six. But, uh, getting cut underneath. Yeah. <laughs> but that's what Jeff Fisher told us last night. He says you'll Time see out. some quarterback draws Houston. by design. And that one worked to pick up a big first down for Houston as they try to take the lead or at least tie it up. As a delivery company, our business revolves around... Well, Bob, it has been a long time since the Houston Oilers have won a game here in Seattle. In fact, their last win came back in 1977. As we take a look at this highlight, the Oilers being led by Elvin Buffet and, of course, return specialist Billy White Shoes Johnson. You can't mistake the refrain in the background of the song that was topping the charts back in 1977. This punt return helping Houston beat the Seahawks. There goes Billy White Shoes Johnson. And all the while, Bob, you were discoing and grooving to the tunes of this the was, Bee Gees. This was when Bob Golick was topping the discos. Eighth play of this drive, Eddie George. How old was Eddie when uh, the Bee Gees were cranking out tunes? 1977. Well... 77, I was, uh, see, I was in college, so I was probably was discoing, or making fun of those people who did. They, they discoed at Notre Dame? <laughs> they dis they, could you give us a little example of that right here? Since you have a <laughs> it's better than a Macarena I did last week. Change your blazer to a white uh, loser suit, you might have a chance. <laughs> Second and six now for the Oilers at the 18. 
And Eddie George, no way. Well, they no are game. just swarming that guy. Terry Wooden, who says he's 100% from the hamstring injury, but still working his way into football shape. You know, this is like, uh, this. Is, I mean, they're getting good support from the secondary also, no linebackers, but also look at, look at this. Look at, look at Eddie George by quarter here. Third quarter, 6.8. Yards per carry is what he normally gets, and uh, boy, just been stifled so far. Gets stronger and stronger. He's a workout fanatic, and he says that helps him in the later stages of the game, but he's out on third down and six. Seahawk defensive front all over McNair again. That one incomplete. Wow. Incomplete to Russell. Corey Harris with another fine defensive play for Seattle. Corey Harris, beautiful play by him. Also, blitz coming up the middle from Winston Moss. I think uh, Steve McNair uh, a little anxious to get rid of the ball. Watch him working up here. Beautiful job. Derek Russell. I mean, ball was thrown very, very well. Corey Harris there. Great play defensively. Fourth no. down and six. And once again, Al Del Greco comes in to attempt what will be a 37-yard field goal. Del Greco accounted for all of the scoring by the Oilers last week. He is just automatic. He is good. He hit from 35, and that one officially from 36. And we're tied at six. This is the NFL on NBC. Welcome back to Seattle. Dan Hicks with Bob Golick. And Bob, we have not seen any offense except for maybe Eddie George, who has a total of uh, 60 yards now, and his breakdown rushing yards by quarter yeah but look at that nine in the third and normally he comes up big in the third quarter that the side brings it out for seattle right up the middle and he's hit at the 24 yard line and that is shedwick wilson who makes the special teams tackle Tagliabue has returned to his uh, seat just adjacent to us, Bob, and uh, also a newcomer to this uh, yeah, his, his original section. His original Chris, seat was taken by him. Chris Miller has taken up residence uh, just next to us. This oh, breeze's yeah. pass is incomplete. There is uh, Chris Miller with the Oregon Duck football baseball cap on. I had, uh, I had a chance star. To, I had a chance to talk to him on a radio show and uh, you know still he, he misses the game and uh, obviously with the the, uh, the the concussions the repeated concussions having to uh, to retire from the game but uh, really wishes he could get back into it. Well another player we know that misses the game is uh, Rick Meyer. He's had to watch John Freeze and the Seahawks not muster much offense at all. Second down and 10 now from the 24. He's going deep downfield. Oh. Mike Pritchard, did he make the catch? Unbelievable. It looks like they're going to call him down at the 32, though. <laughs> what a catch by... How did he make that catch? Well, let's see. He's working up against Darrell Lewis, number 29. Pritchard just taking it the go route down the sidelines. Contact by Lewis, and look at oh, that! Rack. <laughs> oh, that is unbelievable! Not just one of the best this season, the best, and one of the best in years. I mean, Daryl Lewis literally took one arm away from him and said, "Catch this with one arm tied, one arm tied behind my back." Good for 44 yards, and there's a spark of life in the Seahawks offense as Warren gets the call. What a catch by Pritchard. Former Falcon there for three years, the Bronco for two years. Had some injury problems in Denver. Landed here mm -hmm. in Seattle as a free agent after he was waived by the Broncos. You know, that's one of the things about this team. Coming into the game and uh, talking about it, you look at the situation, you look at the talent. You got Blades, Galloway, Pritchard, Kroll. I mean, the, the wide receivers alone are amazing. Then they even say they love 
I mean, the top six. McKnight is another guy. Ronnie Harris, another guy that I really like. But the talent there, now that they found John Freeze, a guy that can get the ball to him, boy, certainly being more productive. And here is Lamar Smith, who backs up Chris Warren. Smith had a 10-yard nifty touchdown run last week, but Baron Wortham puts the wrap on him rather nicely. Well, Henry, Henry Ford has been... Uh, <laughs> He, he's been uh, working pretty hard, having some success in the pass rush. Here he's got uh, Atkins working uh, a little hands in the face, and uh, uh, you know maybe a little bit of grant, a little maybe a little cloth. Now you can't grab the cloth on the back of the jersey like that. You, you can grab the that. cloth from the front, but not around the back like that. Yeah, they just missed that. Third and four. Raise. Mike Pritchard. This time it's broken up by Chris Dishman. And that'll bring up fourth down, Todd Peterson. Well, that'll take the pass rush out of it. That quick uh, quick set, three-step drop. Once again, Henry Ford double-teamed. Pete Kendall had to break off uh, a little bit late to pick up the blitz. But, uh, yeah, Henry Ford, one thing you can do once uh, you start having some success is you definitely end up bringing some attention to yourself. 44-yard attempt by Peterson, who missed earlier from 47. Oh. And this time, Peterson hands it full. But I'm not sure if I'm Dennis Erickson, if I wanted to get into a field goal battle with the Houston Oilers and Al Del Greco. That's what it's been so far, though. KFC. Seattle with a 9-6 lead, just behind Rick Myers. Mike Pritchard, even Rick Meyer, he probably had a pretty good... Uh, view of that on the sidelines spectacular catch by Pritchard 44 yards which netted the 44 yard field goal by Peterson Mel Gray is not back deep for Houston he's been banged up so this is Rodney Thomas back with Rodney Harmon Thomas takes a shot at the 13 yard line let's go back to the, to the catch Un uh, unbelievable Mike Pritchard's catch like I said, working up against Daryl Lewis. Here's the scene we saw before. Watch, now watch Daryl Lewis. His arm is going to grab Pritchard's right arm, basically pull it back, and make force him to catch his one hand as he's hitting the turf. Unbelievable. It's not just the one-handed grab. It's the interference, well, lightly, but it's just the way he had to deal with that like I armed said, by Lewis and still it. catch this ball with one hand tied behind my that back. That is unbelievable. Wow. McNair. And the Oilers begin at the 19. Trailing 9-6. McNair wants a deep one as well. And he's got it. Will Davis. All of a sudden, no offense. There's a flag, Both quarterbacks though. are lighting it up, but a flag has been thrown at the 35. Carlton Gray on the coverage of Willie Davis. Well, Carlton, Carlton Gray was running right with him the whole way. I didn't see any. Pass interference. 26. Defense. It's declined. First down. Oh, really? 46-yard <laughs> gain goes even with the interference on Carlton Gray. Well, I guess Carlton Gray, you're going to see the right side of your screen is where this is going to take place. And uh, I guess if you figure that uh, you're being beat, and there's nobody between you and the goal line, you better do something. And it looks like his right hand might have uh, come down on uh, the right side of the receiver. 49-yard pass completion by McNair. And that's another example of the gun he has. Two bullets in a row, both to Willie Davis. Corey Harris on the coverage that time. But but you, uh, did you see how, throw, how, how hard that throw was from being off balance? Watch, you're gonna, we're going to see the, the little bootleg here again. Well, watch him as he tries to sidestep the defender coming up to take the shot, and he's throwing and not even planted right, and still throws it like a like a bullet. And he is so big. I mean, you know, you look at his his height and his weight, 6'2", 224. You're thinking, okay, that's a pretty good quarterback. He looks more like a linebacker when you see this guy in person. At meetings yesterday, I didn't know who it was at first. I'm thinking that's one of the linebackers. Second and short, plunging through is Eddie George. Trying to pick up the first down to Tez, trying to prevent him from it, but uh, that's a little example of the last two plays of the uh, athletic ability of Steve McNair. He's very confident in his athletic ability. Well, the, the hard thing with, with a guy with that much athletic ability is keeping it reined in. 
You know, you, you can always take it too far, Dan, and, uh, you know, into a situation where you start relying on it, where you start relying on the, being able to run, having to run, instead of just kind of staying where you're supposed to be and throw the ball from the pocket or from the short rollout area. And now McNair wants a timeout after the Tez and company timeout. stopped Eddie Houston. George short of the first this down is of the previous play. So when we come back, it'll be third down and one for the Houston offense trailing by three. Steve McNair calling a timeout, a little unsure of the situation. Possibly, maybe mix up communication. Hey, face it, I mean, here's an opportunity to, uh, to open this game up, to take the win. They're down getting near the red zone. He wants to make sure everybody's hitting on the same page to, uh, so they can get the, what would be touchdown here. Just one timeout left now for Houston as they had to use that one up. Sinclair chasing McNair, trying to dive for the first down. It'll depend on where they spot it. <laughs> Terry Wooden had marked it for the referees, though. He, Terry Wooden went over there and checked out. He said, you know what? I know you guys are busy. I know you got a lot of work. Here, let me mark it for you. He's short. Sinclair and Wooden getting chase on McNair. But and, and beautiful job by Sinclair at staying home. But it shows how fast McNair is to be able to get around Sinclair. And uh, Terry Wooden come in late to make the uh, play. But look, he's going to go, look at I got it right here. See, I know you guys weren't close. It's right here. See? <laughs> he didn't get the first down. El Del Greco will attempt a field goal after these messages from your local station. Tonight, after the game. <laughs> well, in this game, Seattle trying to hold on to the 9-6 lead. But with El Del Greco lining things up for what would appear to be a 40-yard field goal, that lead, with how accurate Del Greco has been all season, well, a flag stops this one. There's some, you know, defensive linemen usually jump to try and get the uh, offense to twitch, and they might have done it. Doesn't matter, though. Del Greco's been so good. Yeah. 45. Hey. What's 40, 45 for him, right? But this is going to be good enough uh, for the first down if it is on Seattle. Well, the reality is that, that Seattle, I don't, the Seattle Johnny. players didn't make contact. False start. 69 yeah. offense. Yeah. So you've got to make contact down. defensively or it doesn't matter. The defensive players jump and uh, they'll do that on purpose to get the guys to twitch and uh, they did. They got them to twitch. John Runyon, the rookie out of Michigan. And there See, he is. You know what they did? Mm, oh, man. Late flag. It was. You know what it was? They... They tried, the offensive line tried. They were all set down, had the elbows down. They've got to stay in that position. They can't change from then. But they tried to go into a set position, be a little fancy to draw off the Seattle Seahawks. Del Greco from 45. Automatic. Three for three on the day for Del Greco. Three for three for Peterson. And it's a nine-all tie. Early in the fourth. NBC is brought to you by Plymouth. One clever idea after another. That's Plymouth. By Zantac 75, the final word in acid relief. By Staples, the office superstore. And by Dr. Pepper and your local Dr. Pepper bottle. Dr. Pepper is just what the doctor ordered. Opening seconds of the fourth quarter here in Seattle. It's been the Al Del Greco show the last two weeks. For Houston, he is on pace to break the NFL single season record for field goals, 35. He's got three today and 23 for the season. He's 23 of 26 on the season. That kick goes to Steve Broussard, who finds a seam on the right. Del Greco tries to make the tackle, but Broussard gets into Houston territory. Man, talking about a guy that just found a lane. He found a wide open lane for about 47 yards. Watch this here. He picks it up. He's going to head off to the right-hand side. And it just opens up right there. And there's Del Greco. <laughs> well, he slowed him up, knocked him out of bounds. But you know what? He's a really good field goal kicker. <laughs> he slowed hey, him up. I, I, I got to stand up for the, the kicker. Uh, you know what? I mean, that was a decent effort um, by Del Greco. He makes a living to play. I'm, I'm agreeing with you. All right. I can't help it. It's just that old defensive lineman in me that just... He doesn't get paid to make tackles, <laughs> and he made a decent one there. He doesn't have the face pass to make tackles either. 
Cuts from the 48. John Freeze over the middle. Complete. Christian Fourier's got a first down. Let's take an update to New York and hear from Greg Gumbel. Dan and Bob, we know you haven't seen any touchdowns there today, so we thought we'd show you one. This is at New England. Drew Bledsoe from 23 yards out hits Ben Coates, who fights his way through two defenders and into the end zone. The Patriots regain the lead on Miami. 21-17, under five and a half to play third quarter. Dan? All right, thank you, Greg. Not as much scoring here, a 9-9 tie in the beginning of the fourth quarter, but Seattle on the move at the 33 of Houston. Three's over the middle, complete. And it's Ricky Prohl who makes the first and goal for Seattle. Blaine Bishop finally brought him down. And it looked like Blaine Bishop. Hey, look, you got Ricky Prohl working out of the slot formation. Starts to make it to the break to the outside, cuts it inside. You cannot put your middle linebacker on a wide receiver. Number 52, Baron Wortham. Man-to-man -man coverage. Very on first Ricky catch of the game for Ricky Prohl. Good talk, for 30 yards. Talk about forcing defense, Final. forcing mismatches. Number three. Time out on the field. 9-9 with Seattle on the march. The copiers broke. Only scoring so far, six field goals. But with a 30-yard reception by Ricky Prohl, working out of the slot from the right side, that has put the Seahawks within good reach of scoring the game's first touchdown with 13-23 left. And remember, we're talking about a Houston defense that is ranked number two versus the run. Uh, so they've got a, a definite advantage down here in the red zone. Lamar Smith is in the backfield for Seattle. Chris Warren is injured. In fact, has been taken in for x-rays. So Lamar Smith upended by Blaine Bishops. Blaine Bishop. Blaine Bishop made the saving tackle on Ricky Prohl to get him down to this part. But uh, watch your Blaine Bishop with a blitz just attacking. Nobody even blocks him. They brought a couple guys on the inside which distracted the offensive lineman. Blaine Bishop totally un uh, unabated all the way to the running back. He'll play three, four different positions. He'll line up as a linebacker weak side, deep safety, nickel corner. He's everywhere. And comes up with a big play there. Second and goal now from the five. No game. Freeze looking to the end zone with plenty of time and incomplete. Good coverage by the Oilers. He wanted Prohl, but Prohl well covered. I think he th I think he thought that Ricky Prohl was going to break to the outside. Prohl breaks inside. And uh, that's something that these guys are going to have to start establishing. When you get in a situation where the, the route is done, you've run the route, You've, you've run the route and now you've got to like ad lib. Now watch, you're going to see you're going to see three starting to point. He thinks that Prohl's going to move to the outside. Prohl breaks it to the inside and thus about 10 yards of difference in where the ball and the receiver were. Third and goal, remember the Seahawks working without Warren. So there's the backup, Lamar Smith, and he can't get going, and that'll bring up fourth down. Oh, and man. the boos from the fans who have not seen much offense at all. Well, you know, before we started this series, I told you this is the, one of the top, and I tell you what, the way they're going today, this may be the top rushing defense in the AFC after this game if they keep it up. Shutting it down, forcing freeze to, to throw into, in an area where there's not much room, and now, of course, you got to go for the points if uh, since these are the only points that have been put up on the, on the scoreboard all day. So this is a chip shot of 23 yards for Peterson. And that one is wide to the right. Oh, man. Wow. Rick Tootin's a holder. The snap's good. The hold looks good. Everything looked like it was in sync. He just pushes it off to the right. Now he didn't get hit. He so just pushed it off to the right. Peterson misses uh, from 47, and then again there from 23. He's 3 of 5 on the day. Meanwhile, Aldel Greco has hit on all three of his field goals. 
and we remain tied at nine. 23 yards. I mean, that, that's, there's no excuse for that one. So McNair and the Oilers take over from the 20. And McNair gives to Eddie George. And Eddie George weaving his way over the left side. Michael McCreary on the stop for Seattle. 11.48 to go. The Oilers have none of their timeouts left. They've had to extinguish a couple because of some confusion at yep. the line of scrimmage. So that could be a factor as this game rolls on. I'll tell you what, I've seen uh, this... This Oilers defense has been playing so much better. They're really looking good. They, they have, uh, in total defense, are, have been ranked eighth in the AFC. So, I mean, they, they really are pretty good. In, and even upped it even, even much more last week in their big win over the Chargers. And there to the near side, Ronnie Harmon. Harmon corralled right away. Brought down at the 27-yard line by Carlton Gray. Carl Gray, Winston Moth both making the tackle there. But... To, Instead of putting him down, looked like they were trying to strip the ball away, get a little turnover. But you got to remember, he got to get him down first, stop advancing the chains, force him to uh, put the ball. Defensive coordinator Greg McMacken, who told us that for the very first time in his coaching career, remember he goes back with Dennis Erickson in Miami, and they've made all nine of their checks. And the defensive yes. card that he keeps, a rarity, and you consider that he coached the top-ranked defense oh. in the country at Miami and wrapped up his Harmon. Cortez Kennedy met him, and the Seattle defense again sends a message. Cortez Kennedy, amazing penetration. Hits Ronnie Harmon, and Harmon doesn't want to go down, but uh, Cortez like, hey, I'm working too hard at this. You are going down. Great penetration, great work. Hey, you, you got to give to the defenses. Houston's defense shut down the Seattle Seahawks down on the three-yard line, and now... It was the Seattle's defensive line forcing the Houston Oilers to punt. Reggie Roby to punt. Ronnie Harris back deep for Seattle. He's taken over the punt return duties from Joey Galloway. Catches this one and is immediately rolled down by number 30, Anthony Dorsett. 9-9. Nine, nine. Last week a terror against San Diego and again the Tez doing a job on Houston. First three games, his numbers last five games. Mm -hmm. Look at how he's come on. And it, it just goes to show what, a, what an accompaniment can do for you when you start having people around you playing more aggressively too. Sam Adams started to draw, take a lot of attention away from Cortez Kennedy. And that has freed the Tez up for six solos today. So Seattle after coming up empty on the Todd Peterson miss for 23 yards out. Freeze gets sacked, and that is Joe Bowden who picks up his second of the season. Yeah, both linebackers worked up to the line of scrimmage late. Bowden came up on uh, the defensive left, it would be John Freeze's right side, and also uh, uh, Michael Barrow comes up on the other side, down the bottom of your screen, he picks up, he gets picked up by the running back, number 32, Oscar Gray, leaving Bowden wide open. Fewest sacks in the NFL. This season, Bowden picks up a key one there that sets Seattle back now second and 18. Roll in motion. And Freeze gets out of this one or does he? Nope. He'll go down again for the second straight time. And this time, Michael Barrow picks up the sack. His third of the season, so back to back sacks by Bowden and Barrow. Well, it was 99, Robert Young, that forced that sack. He got good at penetration. I don't know if you can see, you can see uh, 56, or 56, Michael Barrow there. He finishes it off, but it was number 99, Robert Young, that got good penetration up inside to uh, force him out of the pocket. Michael Barrow was the one who applied the hit last week on Steve Young, which knocked him out of the game with a concussion. <laughs> This time, Freeze gets rid of it. It's knocked out of the intended hands of Carlister Crumpler, Joe Bowden. So I think that hit Bowden in the back of the head. It appeared to hit him <laughs> in the back of the shoulder pad. I mean, I don't know if that's uh, face masking or, or uh, for, excuse me, face blocking or what, but this he didn't even make a play on this. This ball just <laughs> hit the back of the hit, helmet. Hit him right in the back of the helmet. I mean, uh, 
I mean, rule wise, I mean, aren't you supposed to? You can't just put your hands up and block. I mean, that's a, a call they would call against the, the a defensive back. Rick Tootin hangs one high toward Malcolm Floyd's way. Floyd gets a chance from the 30. Flag comes in. Floyd brought down at the 35. More than one flag came in. Boy, as many problems as these teams are having offensively getting themselves going, they certainly aren't doing themselves any good to get field position, are they? I mean, there is no infraction on the play. The block was from the side. Ah. For no infraction on the play, there were some flags flying in there from all directions. Well, we'll let Dennis Erickson try to figure it out. We'll take a break and come back. Still tied at nine. Houston's offense, seven and a half quarters without a touchdown. Sets up at the 35. Seven and a half quarters spanning the last two games. And the bear goes to the air on first down. And wide open into Seattle territory is Chris Sanford, who gets loose. And they're not going to catch him. He's in. Oh. 65 yards. Well, I'm not going to uh, I'm not going to say who it was defensively till I know for sure. Selwyn Jones was on the coverage. Now, now what happened? He got beat on the on the on the route. Sanders started to make the, uh, make the 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 make it look like a go. He breaks back. Selwyn Jones slips, gets frustrated because he wasn't able to make a play on the ball. When he goes back up to knock Chris Sanders out of bounds, kind of like goes uh, a little half speak because he's a little frustrated. And the rest, well, you saw it. Chris Sanders with a 65-yard touchdown catch from Steve McNair, Al Del Greco to add on the extra point and make it 16 to 9. That is the very first catch of this game for Sanders. And Houston has been trying to get him the ball more often, trying to get him those big games that he got last year. And that one hit for a big one. Well, here it is. It's Chris Sanders, Selwyn Jones working along the one side. Selwyn turns his back, thinks he's on a go, knows, oh, man, he beat me here. He's going on a comeback. He gets frustrated instead of coming up and making the hit. Kind of like, uh, you know, just doesn't sell out going after the hit. Chris Sanders with a couple of, I mean, we're not even talking fancy footwork. We're talking a little hop and a skip, and he's gone. And you're not going to catch Chris Sanders, who is a Colorado high school track what's, what's the champion move here? in the 100 oh. and 200 meters. I mean, he gets there, and it's, it's forget about it. It's kind of like, a, it was almost a hesitation. It was almost, he was like sucking him in. Although, Daryl Williams seemed to close on him at the end, but Sanders was gone. Look at this. Just and barely two. in. Oh. Referee's right there to make sure he did not step out of bounds. And he relieves Steve <laughs> McNair. Yes. <laughs> Finally. Thank you. Thank you, Chris Sanders. Why didn't I throw this to you sooner? See? First touchdown pass for McNair. Steve McNair going this hey, season. This is easy. And with 8-12 left, it's given the Oilers a 16-9 lead. Very first touchdown of the game scored halfway through the fourth quarter. Del Greco line drives this one up to the 22-yard line. And it's picked up by Barber, the up back. And Seattle will have another chance on offense. And you know, in, in all fairness, you know, we said it was uh, Chris Sanders against Selwyn Jones. Yes, it was. But once the catch was made, a couple other players came into the mix there and could have made plays. Robert Blackman was one of them. There are a couple of guys there that had a shot at pinning him against the sidelines and making the catch. So, uh, you know, it's uh, there was a few people involved and uh, just a very, very talented play by Chris Sanders. Well, earlier we mentioned that Chris Sanders, uh, the Ohio State alum. There's Joey Galloway. On Seattle's side of the field, just Sanders saying, I can't beat him in 40 yards if we were to race, but ask him what happens after 40. And that's exactly what happened to Sanders on that play. He was gone. It looks like we have Michael Barber down. 
the field, linebacker. Seattle Seahawks, number 54. He's going to be right in the middle of your screen. Right there, he's got the ball. Don't forget to visit the J.C. Penney. I don't know, just, I mean, he didn't take a, a shot, but, uh, hey, it very well could have been, uh, you know, planting the foot in that AstroTurf or, uh, you know, taking the shot from, uh, hey, they're just not used to being tackled. They're used to, a uh, linebackers are used to being the attackees, not the guys being attacked. Or the other way around, the attacker, not the attackee. Got that straight? I think so. Michael Barber you now tell me. <laughs> upright. Barber in his second year out of Clemson. Well, Dennis Erickson uh, picked up his first home win, Bob, in 10 months last week. When they beat the Chargers, good news, Barber is up. Now Erickson finds himself a touchdown down to the Houston Oilers after the big hit to Chris Sanders. And that is uh, Brian Blades. We mentioned the separated left shoulder, so Blades is out. Warren is also, we haven't seen him on the sidelines. He's been out with an injured ankle. I mean, Bla Blades had the rib thing going to begin with. Then ends up with a separated shoulder. Chris Warren goes in. He's getting his ankle work done. So that is what faces Seattle here without Warren and without Blaze. John Fries at the 34. And that pass is caught by Mike Pritchard. Short of the first down, but across the 40. Darrell Lewis on the coverage. Clock continuing to roll. 7.48 left in the fourth quarter. Yeah, I mean, that's a tough play. you got to face it. I mean, that's a tough pass to defense. You know, the guy, it's a little slant. kind of get in there. You get your body between the defender and the quarterback. All you're going to do is step, try to hit the receiver hard enough to jar the ball loose. Freeze to the air again. Pass complete. They should get in the forward progress. Crumpler's got it. Lane Bishop on the stop, and Seattle picks up the first down. Well, they've got seven minutes. They've got over seven minutes. There's no need to, to start throwing the ball long and trying to, to get everything all at one time. Uh, you know, take your time, use the tools you have, but remember, you do have Joey Galloway, and the man is a force to be reckoned with. Hey, they've got Chris Sanders. You pull out your Ohio State card, and you throw Galloway deep. <laughs> Galloway is... Wide left, the near side. Here comes the Houston pressure. Freeze gets rid of it and is picked off by Darrell Lewis. His second of the game. And Lewis still on the run, finally down inside the 40. And a flag came in. Now, that'll probably be a, a, a flag the after the return, yeah, on the return. No. Wow. So bring back the there, interception. There was movement up at the uh, at the far side of the line, defensive line. I had thought they'd gotten back in time. Uh, right up here, you can see up on this side Left right in. there. Defense. Yep, he, did, uh, he rocked down. forward, got into the neutral zone, just couldn't get back. Oh boy! I didn't get a number for. I could even. I could have seen it. I don't know if it was uh, one of the outside backers or if it was Anthony Cook or about one of the guys set up there on the outside trying to get a good rush going. Nevertheless, take away the interception from Daryl Lewis, and it's first and five now from the Houston 49. Seattle trailing 16 to nine. Free is going to the air on virtually every play now. He's got Joey Galloway. Galloway should have the first down. Darrell Lewis corralled him. Seahawks have all three of their timeouts left. The Oilers have none. Well, in the matchup between Darrell Lewis and Joey Galloway, I mean, Joey Galloway has been uh, pretty much getting the best of them except for the interception there, which was a, a bad communication between Freeze and Galloway. Galloway breaks to the sideline. I think John Freeze expected him to break to the middle. Those are right to Darrell, right into Darrell Darryl Lewis's hands. Yeah. 
squeeze again to the air. Oh. Not able to hang on as Crumpler. He made a valiant effort, but Blaine Bishop in on the coverage. Boy, Carlos or Crumpler, you're right. He made a hell of an attempt. Uh, I'm sure he doesn't want to be laid out that, that much, but watch him as he crosses. He's starting to break to the outside to the flag. Now the throw is a little bit inside, so he's just got to totally lay out. Ball right there, but uh, good play coming up to make the hit. Number 23, Blaine Bishop, to make sure that ball stays loose. Second down and 10 at the 40 of the Oilers. Freeze with a quick drop again. And making the catch was Kroll, but he was hit by Bishop, and now they're saying it's incomplete. It appeared he had the football, but the officials rule it incomplete. Well, you think Blaine Bishop's worked up? Now, now you're up. Can you, can you get any closer? Mm. Oh, boy. It appeared he had possession. It, it looked like he had possession of the ball. And now Prohl is down for Seattle. Not sure that, I mean, the ball, he had it kind of like in the little crook of his elbow. I don't know if it was, uh, if he had total control of it and play, played Bishop. He's at a whole new level right now. Pro Bowler last year, Blaine Bishop. Bow-legged, five foot nine, product out of Ball State. <laughs> Glad you said that. Uh, he's got a great work ethic. Jeff Fisher says Blaine Bishop is the first in, first out. He gets in about seven o'clock in the morning and stays out practicing watching film till uh, seven o'clock at night and he went to his Pro Bowl for the very first time last year and well deserved for Bishop another look right. at the hit let's, by let's, Bishop on Pro as Pro walks off let's make the definitive call here there he is the motion comes across does he have it I thought he had it thought he had it thought he had it but the umpire right there to make the call Jim <laughs> Quirk <laughs> I'll tell you what as a player, you uh, hits like that, you get so fired up about it, you could care less if the, if the ball went to Mars. <laughs> if it was a touchdown, what happened? He just, no, he just stoned somebody. Third and 10 now. Freeze is 21 of 35 for 281 yards and one interception. And without Warren, he's been going to the air all series long. Joey Galloway trying to get loose, but he stopped at the 35, and that'll bring up fourth down. Jackson and Robinson in there on the stop. Well, the crowd is uh, pleading, I don't know, either for Peterson to go for the field goal or Erickson to go for it on we're, fourth we're, down. We're, we're talking, what, a 51, 52-yard <laughs> field goal. I don't think there's a decision here to be made. Peterson's never made one past 50 yards. And he's so here gonna, they go. And he's not going to make it here today. On fourth and four, they're going for it. They picked it up. Lamar Smith still on his feet. Smith in for the injured Chris Warren. Picks up a key first down for Seattle. And, and you know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna say this. I mean, first of all, Lamar Smith, watch him. What a catch and a run. But watch also number 52 right there at center I mean, these guys don't get much notoriety but watch him go downfield he's going down to get somebody find somebody else to hit <laughs> lamar smith just rolling his way down the field and that is the first catch of the game for lamar smith and it comes on a big hitter and then he gets the carry stop full rafael robinson crowd, crowd didn't like that call bob John Freeze over the 300 yard mark. Rick Meyer never accomplished 300 plus passing yards. The last guy to do it was Dave Craig for the Seahawks. Freeze to the corner of the end zone for the touchdown. Joey Galloway.
So Chris Sanders scores. The alumnus from Ohio State, and Joey Galloway says, I'll do the same thing, and a chance to tie it up. Todd Peterson on a point after. And we're tied at 16 after back-to-back -back Buckeye touchdowns. Chris Sanders from 65 yards, and then Joey Galloway with his own from 14. And, and boy, talk about a, a route. He knew he needed to get to the end zone. Well, he didn't need to get there, but he wanted it. You're going to see Joey Galloway, top of your screen. He's just going to bring it in towards the post, and he's just going to turn it out right there, right there at the pylon. He's just using the sideline. Just using the sideline to kind of kind of leverage himself there. He knows he's got Chris, uh, Chris Dishman behind him, and there's nothing he can do to get to him except try and hit him and knock the ball loose. Galloway and Sanders, um, are the best of friends. They room five years together in Columbus playing for Ohio State, and they have scored the lone touchdowns of this game, tied at 16 with three and a half minutes left. Well, it's come down to the quarterbacks, and like you said, look at those numbers. Eight receptions, 94 yards, another good day for Joey Galloway, who last week only had against the Chargers in their big win against the Chargers, only one catch for 18 yards. Ronnie Harmon and Rodney Thomas back deep to receive the kick from Peterson, and we'll get a chance to see what Steve McNair can do in a pressurized situation when he has to move his team for a potential victory. Peterson gets into this one. That's out of the end zone. Through the end zone. I guess kickers can get adrenaline rushes too. So Jerry Rome, the offensive coordinator for the Houston Oilers, going over some last-minute instructions with McNair. Remember, the Oilers have no timeouts left. Seattle has all three of theirs left. Now, you know, the problem here with McNair is, even though he's learned, even though he's studied, even though he's he has watched film, and he, he is still a young kid who has got to learn how the NFL works. I mean, there's going to be a lot of quick decisions to be made out there that, uh, hey, it's going to be up to him to make. Eddie George gets the carry. Short of the first down, but he picks up a good eight yards. No times, as you said before, no timeouts remaining, as you said before, Dan. And, uh, you know, keeping the ball on the ground. And, hey, face it, they haven't put a, a rushing drive together since the first drive of the game with Eddie George going six, uh, six carries from 37 yards and uh, taking it all the way down the field. Other than that, they've been shut down in the run game. It looks like they're just going to buy their time, eat some clock, try and get down and score the last point. The delay to George. George has the first down. Terry Wooden makes the stop. Clock continues to roll. 2.38 left. Not only does McNair have to deal with no timeouts, he has to deal with the uh, dome crowd here in yeah. Seattle ringing in his ears. Eddie George showing some good good explosiveness. We, you know, he seemed like he'd been bottled up for a while there in the in the second and the third quarter. Hadn't had a didn't really have a chance to to explode towards the hole here, especially in that the first play and that last on the draw play. Had little room to to get the burst going to get outside. Eddie George has 82 yards on 22 carries. McNair fakes it to him, rolls right, complete. Oh, Robert Blackman on Derek Russell. Oh, jeez. The bad news is they still gained nine and a half yards. What an exclamation point to leave you as we hit the two-minute warning. Blackman on Russell in a tie game at 16. Seattle field goal kicker Todd Peterson reflecting on what might have been. Remember, he's missed two field goals today, one in the third quarter from 47, but he missed a 23-yard field goal earlier in this quarter. That could be the difference. McNair takes the sneak, and he should pick up the first down. As we left you for the commercial, Robert Blackman prevented Derek Russell from picking it up, but McNair gets it. Clock continues to roll. Remember, the Oilers without any timeouts, and we mentioned that 23-yard miss by Peterson.
The snap appeared good. The hold appeared fine. He just kind of pushed it to the right. And this is Ronnie Harmon. Harmon makes a move inside the 30. Oh, come on, guys. This is no time. No time to stop hustling. And there has been the most successful field goal kicker this season, Al Del Greco on the sidelines, who has made three straight field goals today, 23 of 26 on the season. His only misses all season long, Bob, have been from 55, 51, and 47. Well, it's Dateline Sunday tonight on NBC. And then it's must-see comedies of Third Rock from the Sun, Boston Common, plus superstar Jim Carrey stars in Ace Ventura, Pet Detective. Viewers on the West Coast will see these shows at their regularly scheduled times. Wait, I got to hustle home. This is going to be a big night. Well, good run. Good run by, uh, by Houston. Nice cut out to take it to the outside and cut it back if it wasn't for I tell you what. You can see it on the face of, of Todd Peterson thinking about that 23-8. Yeah. Cortez Kennedy saved that one. He chased that one down 15 yards downfield. Eddie George, left side. Picks up some more good positive yardage for Houston. Daryl Williams on the stop. Clock stops at a minute four left. Well, Seattle's defense is re really attacking Seattle. at the point of Number attack. Two. But Eddie George knows that, and he's basically just bouncing it to the outside. He knows where everybody's coming. They know He knows he's, they're coming for him. He just bounces to the outside and finds a nice soft spot and picks up the, you know, the six, seven, eight yards he needs. You know, Timeout is called by well, Seattle. I want you here. They're going to come to the right-hand side. He starts right into the middle. Boom. Bounces it right out to the outside. Everybody kind of caught inside thinking he was done, thinking he was being tackled. So Steve McNair trying to pick up another victory. 2-0 well, we last year, but uh, Bob, those starts really didn't mean anything. The Oilers were out of the playoffs. Now he's in charge of their playoff hopes today, and Al Del Greco could be the difference. Well, we thought this drive would rest on his arm, but he's pretty much passed off that responsibility to Eddie George so far. Second down and a long three. Eddie George trying to move forward for the first down. I bet he'll be short by quite a ways. Cortez Kennedy makes the stop and Seattle takes its final time out of the game so no teams left with any timeouts in regulation now when you look at that Seattle defense you can see that they're tired I mean they're they're tired they're frustrated this has been a long drive it's been a long game but this has been a long drive for them and I think that uh, as a player Dan as a player you sit here in this situation and you know that you've worked hard you know you've done everything you can but you also realize like you said Al Del Greco is the kicker and that you're well within his his range of uh, high probability and that uh, that's something that really can uh, can get to you mentally at this point in the game time permitting following this game we will be switching you to Foxborough for the conclusion of the Dolphins and Patriots the score here in Seattle tied at 16 Al Del Greco already has three field goals and warming up on the sidelines for a potential game winner third down and short Eddie George trying to pick up the first down, and he may be short again. And Boy, they, here comes Del Greco. They really, I don't think that they wanted too much to worry about picking up the first down. They were just going to get in there, let him kick the ball. With no, yeah, it would have been nice it. to get out a little closer. Exactly. In, huh? <laughs> yeah, well, true, but Although, with, no, with no timeouts, I mean, they basically have the 40 seconds left to get the, kick, the, the field goal team on the field, get them lined up, let them concentrate, and boot it. And the clock continues to roll. Here's a look at what Del Greco has done. 23 of 26 this season. This a potential game winner from 37. Block! Oh! And that is oh. Robert Blackman going the distance. Oh. Do you believe it?
There was no chance that ball was going through unless somebody got their hands on it. And I think, I think it was number 90, Terry Wooten. It's okay, we're getting it for number 99. Michael McCrary gets through. Not only does he get through, not only does he knife through, there's 99, Michael McCrary. Not only does he knife through, block the field goal, recover the field goal. Right there. But he has the presence of mind to realize that I'm not going to make it. Robert 65 yards. <laughs> Michael McCrary with a huge play on what appeared to be a game-winning automatic field goal for Del Greco turns into a McCrary right. block and he's a got McCrary lateral to Blackman for the distance and look he's got the ball he's taking her home one more time you're gonna see McCrary obviously come in to the right side of your screen to talk about the ball bouncing the right way, they say that football take funny bounces, not, not, not for the Seattle Seahawks the last two weeks. Todd Peterson, who was watching in agony on the sidelines earlier, thinking that his 23-yard field goal would cost his team the game, sees that Blackman is going the distance and he's off the hook. I can sleep tonight. Vindication. <laughs> yeah, and, but look, he had the presence of mind to know that he's got to go get his helmet to go kick the extra point. <laughs> good, good for him. In the excitement, you thought he would have been forgot about that. And that's what it feels like to go from what you think is going to be a loss to four seconds away from a victory. Have, have these Houston Oilers just suffered at the hands of things like this? The one, the, the one point loss against the Chiefs? The one point loss? Last week, Last the, week San to the 49ers. Now let me tell you what they're going to do. They're going to take that football, give it to the equipment guy. He takes it to a special guy who can paint it up real nice and say, Michael McCrary, blocked field goal for a touchdown, won the game. Line drive taken by Rodney Thomas. Time has run out. And the Seahawks pull it out of what appeared to be a Houston victory. Al Del Greco had not had a kick block since 1986 when he was with Green Bay. That's the final score here, 23 to 16. I'm Dan Hicks, saying so long from Seattle.